others toss me out. Yeah. Well, it's on the end. It's on. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the April 1st Selectors Meeting. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 We have public comment. Are you going to join us for public comment, Charlie? Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I wanted to say whatever I say, we'll take it personal. Thank you, fools. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, yeah, I'd like to talk a little about community announcements, town parking lots. When I got up this morning, I got in my car, it was 34 degrees. When I got in the car to come to this meeting, it was 38. Mm. You know, the April Fool's jokes are on us, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm confused one minute, we're suing the state, and the next minute, we're best friends. <laughs> While you're working on the JOP, how about getting some info on the kiosk for the town lots? How about we ask the state to be real? I'd like to give you a couple examples. Okay, my parents, my mom's house, 63 Ocean Boulevard. 61, Cable Street, the beginning of the CPA lot. All winter, there's probably 30 people to park in that lot. It's nice, it's safe, it's off the street. But today, they all have to be gone because the meet is started at Hampton Beach. So now we're going to disperse those people onto LMKO Street, you know. And you see these people get together. It becomes a community. Yeah. It snows, they're out there shoveling together. People are out there helping to each other. Now they're gone. <clears throat> there is no need for the state to be doing that in town lots in, in the Hampton. Another example is Ocean Gaming down the street. This is another place. There's probably a dozen people working there tonight, but their employees, the same thing, are going to go to all over the side streets, and that front lot is empty. Oh. When you're doing the JOP with the state, now's the time to say, okay, come on, lad. let's get real. Because the real season down here is May 15th to September 15th. <laughs> April and October, they're hurting us. So when people get tickets, they get them in Hampton. They don't get them from the state of New Hampshire. So we're taking the rap. It's just wow. not fair. That's good. Um, how about we ask the state one simple thing? How about asking them to tell the truth? Because the signs say eight to midnight, no exceptions. Well, I'm not sure if there's any days of the year that's actually true. Okay? How about, like tonight, the 30 people that can't park there across the street, when we're doing a JOP with the state, we go, hey, how about letting the people park from 5 in the morning until 9 tomorrow morning and let them know you have to pay between 9 and 5, you know, when and if there is a demand. We understand the need, to, you know, to pay for the bathrooms. We understand they're doing it for half price and they're a self fund Believe me, I've heard every argument in the world. But it's wrong. It hurts our businesses. You know, it, it needs to stop. Um, this Last April, Mike Houseman is, is dread. He's on the HBAC. He gave me the numbers, and I think I gave them to you recently, but 286 tickets last April. 446, which is even worse in October. That's $18,000, you know, paid, if, if they're paid on time. We need to fight for these town businesses with a couple of thoughts in mind, to be user-friendly and to have common sense. The town lot should also you know, see if we can get together with the state with the kiosks and find out and do it because it would be the fairest way to do it. Charge by the hour. The state's had some good, you know, they're making the most money down there. Yeah. But the preseason and postseason, especially April and October, it's ridiculous. And, and we got to fight. I'm, ask, I'm asking this board to please fight for the businesses, you know, and, and, and look at it and say to the state, go, hey, let's have a rational, you know, debate. Let's say, show us your numbers. Show us what it costs to take you in because we know the bad advertising we're getting from the tickets in, the, in those preseason months. So when it's 38 degrees tonight and that lot's empty and you're making people walk all the way around the street, it's nice, safe off street. It, it can happen. It should happen. It's a disgrace that it's not happening and, and really fight for us with the JOP. I thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments or whatever you like. 
Uh, we're not going to be communicating with the, we're gonna go be going over this next. Well, Mr. Chairman, can we ask for a memo uh, for, from uh, Mr. Preston that we can use so we can have a discussion with the state? If we could have something in, in print mm -hmm. targeting I okay. know I won't we're going to be going over later tonight how we're just going to be listening to um, public comment and we're yes. not going to be interacting with them. But may we request that? Well, you can now, but after tonight, no. Well, if I'm you not... want to, you can go get in contact with them later. Well, That's I'd how we're going to do if... it. And anyone that does do public comment can feel free to submit something if they want to set, you know, submit some support facts. Yeah. Well, in this context, I'm just as long as the board is sitting here, I think it would be valuable. I'm just for telling us. you, after tonight, because yeah. we're going to go over that. That's on the agenda. Okay. That we're not going to be doing it this way. We're just going to let the people come in and talk, and we're not going to be, you know, having a back and forth. Because what he's saying makes a lot of sense. Good. Now that's why it's good for people to come in and say what they have to say. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. All right. I'm just asking you to, you know, please bike for us. Thank yeah. You. you know, we we need the help for the businesses. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, any other public comment out there? <laughs> um, we have the approval of mi minutes for March 18th, or announcements and community calendar first. Mayor Louise? Uh, I have a hu huge pile here that I'm trying to uh, figure so out. Fred gives us a lot of homework. Okay. I think I'm okay for the moment. Regina? I just wanted to inform the public that I talked to Channel 22 in the Village District meeting is now broadcast, broadcast so you should be able to streamline it. Oh, good. Right. And um, I, Jim? Yes, uh, I just wanted to say that the Cable Renewal Committee had a uh, survey online and a survey in the town hall that they could written yeah. one, had about 500 uh, responses. We are currently putting that all together, and we will post it on the website as soon as it's all together, and then we will be wrapping this up fairly uh, quickly. So uh, we, we waited to get all those responses. There are about 500 responses. The majority of the people, the majority of the complaints were cost and competition. And so good. we'll be dealing with that. Thank you, Rusty. Also. And I wanted to say um, <clears throat> that if anyone didn't see that, uh, beachside, whatever it was called, HGTV. Uh, on HGTV yesterday at 8 o'clock. It was very interesting. Hampton really never looked better. Um, it was quite interesting hmm. to see it. So, good show. And I, thanks, Rusty, for putting that online. So pe a lot of people I heard talk about that were going to make a point of watching it. It was very good. Good show. And next we have the approval of the minutes for March 18th. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any comment? All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. And then we have uh, the consent agenda, which is <laughs> cemetery deeds, uh, li library alternates, 2019 credits and exemptions, parade and public gathering license. And um, Th that includes Memorial Day Parade on 527 and Ride to End Alzheimer's on 622. I'll make a motion that we accept the second agenda. And we have a first and a second. Thank you. All those in favor? <clears throat> we have the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> both trash trucks have been received. One's been being worked on because one of the things they installed in Canada broke. So that's being returned tomorrow morning. Uh, they're both insured, they're both registered. Training is ongoing. These vehicles will be a familiar sight on the town roads very shortly. Uh, contracts for the changeover of street lighting have been received. They're under legal review. We expect work to commence in May for the change of all the new lighting in, in, in within the town. That's good. The contract for the revaluation of the town has been awarded to the low bidder municipal resources. Work will commence after review and approval by the State Department of Revenue Administration, which was received Friday. So they have approved the contract. So we'll be starting relatively soon. Um, work orders for the 
electronic inside doors. The doors have actually been received. Uh, everything's ready to go, and they will be installing those shortly. Applications for veterans, elderly, blind, and other tax credits, as well as the, the Hampton Beach uh, Precinct Entertainment Tax Exemption, have to be filed by April 15, 2019. Please see the assessor's office for the necessary forms so that you can get your exemption. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, questions for the town manager's report? <coughs> Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. Um, and I mentioned when I came in this evening on the uh, assessing, uh, I think it would help, I know it would certainly help me, if we could have some kind of seminar uh, every year for boards of selectmen. This, the the uh, faces change from time to time, and I would appreciate something, uh, perhaps the NHMA would be kind enough to uh, conduct uh, a, a meeting to help us understand all the ramifications in these. I get all tangled up in little knots trying to fight my way through some of the uh, assessed valuation, and it is a very important uh, thing that we do. So I would like to see that uh, this year if we could and, and in subsequent years if we just make that uh, available to selectmen because I think it's one of the hardest things to contend with. Regina? I actually have a question about the tax assessment as well. I was talking to the town manager the other day, and we were explaining that our equalization ratio is like at 87 something percent. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's just say that we decided to not have the assessment, and then last year, then the following year or two years, whenever it happens, it drops even more. The town manager explained to me that we would have to take that all at one time. So by having it on a more regular basis when it's below the 90% prevents us from having to, you know, a huge bulge having that huge bulge all at one time. So I know there was some people had asked me about that. So uh, Fred Welch and I had a conversation about it the other day. So I just wanted to explain that. And also I was asked about, is there gonna be a spring leaf pickup scheduled? Public Works is here. Okay, so we'll wait for them. Leaf pickup? They're coming up to talk about their budget. Oh, so. oh okay. <clears throat> so there's no... And is that going to be the discussion on solid waste impacts? Solid waste, and, and yeah. you are also going to discuss budget impacts, so yeah, they have the biggest budget, so I thought it might be a good idea for them to be here because they've been working diligently on their budget, Mr. Chairman. Okay, great. So we have no spring pickup schedule? Well, uh, when they come up, okay, we'll talk right, about it. All right, all right. Um, and Jim? Set. Rusty? The only question I had was on, on the, uh, the changeover for the lights. I yes. know we have a number of streets that are privately owned in town. Uh, will people on those streets be able to buy and purchase those lights? Do you know? Is, there, they, is, there, any, is there any? We'll have to talk separately to the individuals, the company, mm -hmm. to okay. see whether or not they can. We obviously can't. Right. If they're their private lights, then they'll have to make a I just say if, if, if while they're here <coughs> doing it, if we have some private yeah, oh yeah, private worth, worth lots at. that may want to enjoy the some of the uh, savings that you get from the LED lights, they so, might. Yep. So. They um, want to call us and, or call Public Works and indicate they want to participate. Then maybe we can ask the uh, if we get some people who want to. Maybe we can ask the. The street lighting people, and, and maybe they can we can make a deal with them sure. on behalf of those owners. Real Mrs. quick follow up: um, maybe we could provide the vendor with the names and addresses of people who are not on the public system, and then maybe they could uh, people could sign up that way. Because we, uh, we must know where. No, we because don't. we don't have anything in our record base. They're private lights. Oh, we don't. No. Well, we know that we're not putting... We know the streets that are private. Okay. Whether or not they have lights on them is... Oh, we don't have an inventory of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, next, we're going... And thank you for your report, Mr. Thank Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, next, we go into old business, and it's the Board of Selectmen representation on various boards and committees. So, first of all, I... Uh, 
I'd like to talk about the um, Heritage Commission because that's a new commission mm -hmm. that we're coming up with. Yeah. Um, and what are we doing about having people, are people, have we asked people to submit their names yet? We already have one. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I asked Christina today, although she's been very, very busy, to try to come up with something that uh, we can advertise out and see who would like to be a member of the commission. Mm -hmm. We have five members. One will be a selectman, one will be a planning board member. Now, the ordinance has got to be amended mm -hmm. already uh, because it says two selectmen will be members and two planning board members will be members. <coughs> and the statute says one selectman, uh -huh. one planning board yeah. member. There's so. not, from what I've seen, there's not that many meetings. But I do know the person that has already submitted a, um, yes. an application. That request. Yeah. And they're a real a wonderful you know, worker. Good, good and, resume. Yeah. Excellent resume. Will be great at that position. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Chairman, uh, Ann Carnaby and I, when I sat on the planning board, really pushed this article. I would like very much to serve on that uh, Heritage Commission. Okay. Well, I, we'll so we're going to start with at the top um, the cable TV advisory representative. Um, I'd like to do that. You'd like to do that? I'll make a motion that Jim is. The I'll slide. second. So, and um, what about the, for the vice chair? Or the alternative. Or the alternative. Do we yeah. need to vote on these, or can we just? We can collectively vote on them. Yeah. Consensus. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what about the vice chair? I'll do it if you want. Okay. So you mean the alternative? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gina is the alternate. I hope both of you complain about the sound. <clears throat> And next, we have the Capital Improvement Plan Committee. Now, who's doing that presently? I think it's me, but I don't think I've ever even gone to a meeting, but I'll do it again if you want. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> hopefully kind Hopefully, we'll have some meetings, because I think that's the plan with some elected boards in town right. that I've been meeting with, yeah. some other elected boards. Well, that's always been um, the big thing with the uh, Capital Improvement Plan. It, it's, it, through the years has been very few meetings and yeah. it probably would be better if there were more. So uh, who are the other people that are on it? Last time I, it was, well, it's Jason, Tracy Emmerich. Uh, and who is, it's, it's, traditionally it's been the person that's a chairman, well, for years it was Tom Gillick and he was always the chairman of the planning board. Yeah. <coughs> Tracy's chair. Tracy's, chair. Tracy's, chair. Tracy's been chair yeah. for the last five or six years. Or so um, at the planning board, Maybe you might want to ask some questions about that, Jim, about the capital improvement. Okay. If there's any interest okay. or anything we can do to make it better down there. Yeah. Does anybody want to be so the alternate? Who's question? going to be the alternate? I'll be it. I don't care. Right. Okay. And um, next we have the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce, which we haven't always had someone doing it, but it, um, I was the alternate one year and I went to the meetings. I found it very interesting. Hmm. I'd move to make you the representative if you uh, care to do it. I think I have an, probably enough for you me. Know, um, How about if Jim would it, like you, to do you with do it? The alternate. Yeah, that's fine. I will do that. Oh, that's good. Jim. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I'm the the alternate. And then the Hampton Area Commission, which is not a uh, chain, a, a uh, board of selectmen right. Right. commission. Yeah. It's a state commission. And it doesn't necessarily have to have a selectman. I am the representative, and it was, pr I think, primarily because I lived down there uh, that I started being the representative. But um, there's seems it's been very interesting there lately. So I have one more year, I believe, left on my. Yeah, you do. Yeah, um, after this year, oh, I think. That's great. Yeah. And the village, Hampton Beach Village District representative. Um, Regina has been doing it, but this isn't something that we've always had to have either. Right. Hmm. I just I'm you nice. like to do it. Yeah. yeah, I like to go to the meetings. So yeah, um, if you guys don't mind. That's yeah, good. no. And who wants to be the alternate? Mary Louise. Okay. And then the and um, I try to go, but unfortunately for me, it's the time is bad yeah. for me. Um, the Heritage Commission, I'd um, like, yeah. Mary Louise just asked for that, and um, I'll be the alternate. Okay. 
And next is the Municipal Records Committee representative. Who is that currently? I don't know who that is. Hmm. I have no clue. Well, you don't have many meetings with that one. I'll be glad to do that. Oh, and well, I think they've had two meetings in five years, but that's why I'm glad to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I would like to see what happens there. Um, the next is the Municipal Budget Committee. We have Rusty and Regina. The yeah. Naval Committee. How is that going now that there's not been any we funding have for that? Quite a few people involved, I understand. So it's going good? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I'm on, I mean, I'm on it. I think I'm on it for. We've, so you want to be the representative? Years. Yeah, I'll be the representative. And uh, the alternate, Rusty? Sure. And the planning board, we have Dunn. And the Recreation and Parks Advisory Council, who presently does that? I think it's Jim, is it? I think so. I'll, I'll do it. Do. Yeah. Jim? I'll be the alternative, if you want. Okay. Good. Okay, thank Spiffy. you. So, um... Can we notify these uh, boards and committees so that they can send a notice on their meeting times. We, we directly, normally do now that you've made it. No. Directly yeah. to, yeah. yeah. That's good. And, um, you know, one of the things, oh, what about um, the the chat one? I thought Jim was going to do it. Jim, What's that? The chat? Yeah, yeah. You're going to do that? Yeah. Uh, Jay Denny came in last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. that's not Jim one Dinger. of our official. Oh. Yeah, I have another one too, actually. Yeah. The Land Lease Committee? Yeah. Could I be the selectman rep to that? Yeah. Okay. So and that is an official one, is the Land yeah, Lease. Yeah, I, I think it's the case where we haven't had very many meetings. Yeah. But. Okay. So what I was going to suggest, when we have these other committees, like this chat one, that isn't, we have enough, really, yeah. committees here that we need to keep track of. So in the future, when we have, at least for this coming year, when we have these other committees that form, I, I'd i like to see if we have a consensus here that we would like to have those people come in on a regular basis and report to us rather than have us to go to the meeting. Excellent. I agree. Okay. So, Mary Louise, you agree with that? Absolutely. Regina agrees yeah. with that. It's unanimous. So, in the future, and it's good, and anybody can go to all of these meetings, yeah. including the public, are you know invited to come um, you know we w we're very interested in what happens at them but we don't necessarily have to have a selectman there and we would rather the people that maybe the chairman of those different committees will come here and report to us so that it can be spread out so that everyone all over town understands what's happening um, so instead of asking for other old business I'm gonna go uh, we can do what, what other old businesses we have when we get to finished with all of what we have here for new business, because okay. I want to go over really what old business is as part of under new business, number one is protocol for the meetings. <clears throat> and um, again, I'm going to ask for consensus from everyone um, if we have a consensus. And the first uh, part of the meeting that I'd like to address is the public comment and the amount of time for the public comment and about because it, it's been for the last several years that there's not supposed to be a back and forth and it would be easy if it always worked out the same but being here every week or whenever we have meetings quite often some people are turned down being able to comment and say more or interact and other people aren't. So I think it's better off if we just don't interact. But anyone that makes public comment could, is welcome to um, make, give a summary and leave it here at the table so it becomes part of the record. That's um, good. That's good. And uh, then we'll also have uh, the, the time. Um, Rusty, now what was it last year? Three minutes. Okay. Does everyone yeah. agree that three minutes is sufficient for public comment? Jim? I think five. Yeah, I like five, I think. You know, we, we don't have that many come in here. Five. Okay. I mean, what about four? 
Four? <laughs> I, no, <laughs> four. Four. <laughs> we'll do four. Yeah. Four. So that is going to be four for public comment and no interaction. If someone really feels a need to interact at that moment, they can go out into the hallway there and talk with whoever they right. want to talk with. Good that, idea. You know, mm -hmm. That's one way of dealing with it. Or they can you know, get, uh, get in touch with them later. Um, so the next thing is about the agenda. And I think we've talked about this quite a bit here. And the agenda um, requests need to put in, be put in before 5 o'clock on Wednesday, right, Mr. Welch? Yes, sir. And um, we're going to be going over tonight what, um, what are the agenda hot buttons. And we're going to talk a little bit about every one of those, of these items that um, are the, we've gotten eight where we, you know, we are going to particularly address the top five. Um, just so that, you know, we'll be looking to address things that might want to be on the agenda that back some of these items up. So if someone feels a need to be on the agenda, they need to put it in writing and submit it to, um, to uh, Christina. And the same thing, if, if you don't have to put it in writing for the, uh, although it's probably easier just to send an email to Christina if you're on the board and you want yeah. to have something done. And I'll be meeting with Christina and Fred um, numerous times to make, and you know, we'll go, uh, I looked to Fred for guidance if something sometimes shouldn't be on the agenda or the town attorney. But we'll be uh, putting as many things on the agenda as we can, um, and it will all be according to the time frame and other things that it might be more important that come up week to week. So it will be uh, you know, something that just happens. So anyone that has some ideas about the agenda is more than uh, can submit them to me. Um, or, you know, put them in writing and we'll do what we can do to make sure everyone's happy with that. Rick, could we send, like, <clears throat> we send a request to you with a copy to Christina? Yeah, or you just really need to send it to Christina and I'll see it there. Oh, okay. Because I okay. do stop in. Um, but, I mean, if you, if you want to talk with me about something, feel free to send me an agenda. Okay. I mean, um, an email. And the next is the town manager's report. And when we're having the town manager's report, like tonight, it went just the way that it should go because everything that was talked about was there. Uh, there's something today under uh, something about the tax assessing. So if you're going to ask a question under the town manager's report, it should be one of his points, which today he has six points there. Otherwise, it should be under old business. Um, and does anyone um, want to ask any other questions about the protocol or discuss anything? No. So everyone understands that it's pretty much the way we've always done it. Um, but we're looking to make everything smoother and make the mo meetings, you know, roll a little bit better and maybe be more interesting. This, this is maybe pushing it, but I think we need another meeting with the state on the joint operations plan. Well, see, we're going to be discussing. We're, tonight we're going to be having a little thing, work with the state we're going to talk about, but that would be something you would want to bring under under old business ordinarily. Okay. But we're going to be talking about it anyway. Um, and um, so now we're going to move to number two on new business, which is the Selectman's five agenda topics for discussion. Um, and the, I'm going to read them out. And again, we'll, we'll just go around a, a little bit and talk about how these are going to be on the agenda as time goes. Like the first one is trash and recycling. We're going to be talking a little bit about that tonight with um, the DPW, and we're going to be having our big meeting on April 15th. Um, so um, what do we know right now about the meeting, um, Mr. Welch? Why don't you come up? Yeah, yeah why don't you join yeah, us at good. the table? Yeah. what you were talking about because 
I was only listening well, to one ear and the other ear. Well, we're, we're going to be happy to hear what you have to say. Uh, <laughs> and uh, awesome. your discussion on um, uh, discussion on solid waste and the impacts we're having from that. But one of the things that we're talking about is um, agenda items for the uh, you know, for the selectman's agenda. Mm -hmm. And trash and recycling is the thing that's the most common uh, goal that we want to be working on. Right. Um, so would you rather have the discussion on solid waste impact first before we move into talking about the trash and recycling because we're going to be having a big meeting on April 15th? Yes. Um, I would like to comment on trash and recycling as it affects uh, the default budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, that's another thing that's going to be uh, that's we're going to talk about the uh, default budget. So you're you're right in the middle of everything. Yeah, the two are, <laughs> the two for us are uh, intimately tied together. Mm -hmm. um, over the last two weeks, um, in looking at the budget and, and the default number that we've been, we've been working with is five million four hundred and twenty-two thousand um, dollars. A portion of that 124,000 is of course the payment for the new trucks, the Mac trucks, the annual. So in, in some respects we're really dealing about 5,300,000. Normally that's been a um, average operating budget for the department for the last number of years. But with the 20% penalty that we're paying to um, waste management currently based upon the last audit it runs m our budget 185,000 in the negative right at the moment so um, we worked with Christy Jamie Sullivan Fred uh, basically uh, took those final numbers uh, accounted for the hundred and eighty five thousand dollars in expected overture in the, uh, the basically re recycling penalty and uh, I've got a budget where I basically had to cut 160,000 out of everyday operating things uh, that I would normally do such as tree removal went from 25 to 5, sidewalks went from 26 to 0. Um, I actually have a memo that I had prepared. Um, Stop signs went from 8,000 to 4,000. So solid waste is, and, and, and dealing with it um, has dictated, if you will, or slashed into the department's budget where things you asked earlier, can we do a spring uh, brush collection? I would recommend not. Um, I did it, did it last year because there were three major storms in March. There was a lot of trees down, a lot of brush down, and um, it needed to be done that uh, this march was uh, more like a lamb than the lion and the additional time that it would take and the additional fuel that it would take I, I literally don't have in my budget um, so additional services like that um, I'm recommending that we that we trim out or forego at least for this particular year so that's the state of it Do you want more specifics yeah um, yes. Um, now, so you're saying that there's a hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars shortage, um, and a lot of this is Thank affected you. by the twenty percent um, premium that the waste management has yep. given. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we, we attempted to do things like, for instance. Uh, we changed C and D contractors back in um, the end of the year, uh, reducing uh, that tonnage. We were paying 45 a ton. It went to 85. We found somebody to do it for 75 and uh, saved $30 a ton or so on hauling. So I mean, we've taken a number of steps like that. But yes, this uh, uh, the solid waste portion has really uh, kicked a hole, combined with the, the fact that we had the default budget. Mm -hmm. So where we were asking for, you know, five 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 four, I forget what the actual request was in the budget. Um, the default combined with um, the solid waste has really left us in basically our hands tied. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, so just to add to that, not just in looking at what services and what can we do with the default budget, uh, some of the things that aren't necessarily services but could impact services, we took a look at the number of part-time uh, employees we hire throughout the summer. Uh, where in the past, sometimes we have reached the numbers that we're able to fill and other times we haven't. Uh, we've taken some of those positions off uh, the table. We also are looking um, the other end of it. If we're going to be paying more money uh, for the recycling and our, it's because our recycling is contaminated, we have to take the first steps on working to get our recycling not contaminated. Um, we were in here probably a month and a half ago. Um, We've had many of these discussions in-house. We've had them uh, with some of you as well, is that we have to start with the first message. While we have many of parallel paths, just sort of like the agenda did today, we, we have to start with something. So one of the things that we're doing is starting the Recycling Right campaign. Regardless on how we move on everything else that is part of this um, whole discussion, is that people have to learn how to recycle again. Um, I was watching CBS America News this morning, and they did something very similar to the gentleman that came in uh, a few weeks ago talking about the recycling industry and how uh, a lot of people just aren't doing it right. And what was really great <coughs> about it, if anybody wants to look it up, is that they actually went and did an audit on somebody's trash can. So instead of what's happening to us where they dump our truck and do an audit, they went into someone's individual can. And it's amazing. You know, People are throwing out their paper plates, but they're filled with all the food, not recyclable. Never ever is styrofoam recyclable. It's great that you got a new Keurig and that the Keurig box is cardboard, but all the plastic um, wrapping and the styrofoam that goes in it and the box itself not broken down, that's not the way it should be done. The cardboard is the cardboard, the rest is garbage. So it's learning again how to do it so that we're not contaminating it, so we're not paying this $185, $185 a now time. Now just as long as you're there at Keurig, are those little, <laughs> so, um, Plastic things that go into the coffee machine. What happens no, with them? No, that is garbage. That is food. Yeah, that's. So it, it's all these little things. So that's part of what we're doing is that we really think it's time to go back to the simple, the very, very basic of how recycling started when we were thinking about newspapers, tin cans, um, cardboard broken down, and, and try not to get into all the fundamentals of some of the one, two, five, seven, nine, you know, all the different plastics. The one and twos, yes, if they're clean, you know, your water bottle is recyclable. Take the cap off, you know. We'd let, rather go simple. If in doubt, throw it out. That's the other message. That, because was, that was a big thing on the internet today from CBS News. And that was exactly, that, yeah, and that was their said, message. In doubt, throw it out. So ours will be recycle right, recycle often, and uh, stickering everybody's, uh, Recycle bins with, so you see it, paper, tin, you know, seeing just the very basics um, so that along with what we'll have to do with services and, and how we address the, the financial impact, what do we do to, to help it, not just keep it there and, you know, make up the money. So I think that's very important as part of one of the things we're doing, even though there's three more things that we all need to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's the problem, is the recycling really never, as much hard as everyone worked on it, people just didn't pay enough attention, and I don't know, it, it never, as far as I'm concerned, picked up the traction that it should have, uh, and now it's out of control. Right, and especially if you're doing it wrong, you know, nothing mm -hmm. in a bag ever in the recyclable. Just so, forget the word bag when it comes to recyclable. They're not. The potato chip bag is not. The plastic bag is not. Not in what we collect as recyclable. So as long as we're talking about recycling right now, today, uh, how many letters went out, Fred, to um, the different condominiums? Uh, about 1,000. Con letters have right. gone out. So did you want to discuss uh, about that? So those letters that are going out are... Um, letters to owners uh, of properties about nine thousand about a thousand properties 000, yeah, yeah. Um, of owners that have been receiving trash and recycling services uh, when they shouldn't have been uh, for whatever the reasons were whether it was part of the issue of back when when we were making money uh, because of recycling whether it was because maybe an association went they went and changed their bylaws because in it it said, oh, 
you don't get town services. They did it, but they didn't go through the proper channels, which is planning board, board of selectmen, to do it. Um, each one of these letters went out with the reason we're saying that you can no longer have trash and recycling. Their development was either approved that way, um, they are over uh, the board's threshold of... Uh, Which is five units or less that is picked up. Right, it, that gets picked up, correct. But most of these, and Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, these are uh, zoning bylaws, uh, excuse me, uh, condo bylaws uh, that specifically said in them that their trash and recycling was to be private. And most of them did that on their own. Yes. Yes. As part of their development um, approvals, they offered to take care of their own trash and recycling, but yet we are doing it. So um, that notice has gone out. We're asking the associations to uh, get in place by July 1st. Uh, the understanding that beginning the week of July 1st, and it will not happen overnight uh, because some people are here July 1st week, some people are not here July 1st week, but over those next few weeks, when you put your trash out, if you are one of those units, we will be collecting it. So we'll be following uh, the trash and recycled vehicle uh, trucks with a truck and trailer collecting the bins. So on July 1st, these condos that are being notified, uh, you are going to go out and take the carts back because right. they belong to on the town. Right, on their day, on their day of pickup. So July 1st is a Monday. Uh, Monday, normal route, that will pick up Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Fourth uh, of July is in that week, but we do pick up on Fourth of July week. Um, it's one of our busiest weeks. It's one of the busiest weeks at the beach. So as hard as it may be, it's in good effort to make sure that everybody's here so that we can collect mm -hmm. them. So people should know that these people will all have been notified, notified. and hopefully work with their boards. Uh, we supplied a, a group listing multiple entities that can provide private service. Um, we didn't just leave them in the wind um, so they could call and, you know, maybe if they're somewhere adjacent to them, you know, group rates, those type of things. Okay. So now we're going to discuss this with the board. Mary Louise? Yes. Are you, and, and I have a, a printout here, Jen, uh, because you were obviously at the planning board. Uh, this is the draft minutes for the plan review committee on March 27th. And there's a um, development proposed down there, and on page three it says, Jennifer said C3 shows barrels. Now, whether these are carts or literally barrels, but some kind of containers. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer reserves the right before the planning board. A solid waste ordinance is before the board of selectmen that would defer from this right now. Maximum barrels they have. Jennifer needs to check how this will work. They may be able to get them on the property. She does not know that she is that she is loving 28 barrels. How much space do 28 barrels take across J Street? They have to be three feet apart. 28 barrels probably will not happen. You I did appreciate leave out the sound effects that I did that day. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that you're communicating because the planning board and the zoning board need their heads in the right place too. It doesn't do any good to talk about it here, but it's the planning board, and sometimes the planning board doesn't pay much attention. Um, I, the individual who's chairing the planning board now had a little email from me who, when I described that it's the Board of Selectmen's prerogative to handle the waste, that if you can keep on top of it, and thank you for being there, and explain to them what they can and cannot do. What are we doing, Mr. Chairman, about the meeting on the 15th with the businesses? Well, we're going to discuss that. We're going to finish with their uh, oh, presentation okay. first. Because it will affect yeah, we them understand. as well. Um, Rusty, you wanted to talk. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple questions. I think, I think part of the thing we have a, a conflict is this board, and I think it's unanimous, agreed to five units or less. Yet you have some of these that are on there that only have their condex and they only have two people. Yep. We have one street in town where half the road is all conduct, or the whole road is conduct. Half of the street has it in their bylaws and half of it doesn't. How do we address those situations? Well, why are they on there of their conduct? So what it is, is this goes directly back to the condo or conduct bylaws. When those units in particular were being built, it was offered 
that they would take care of their own trash and recycling as part of their approvals. And whoever built Condex 1 and 2 just took his condo docks from that one, and then when he built this one, you know, it changed it. it when you have a approved condo docks, you just use the same format. Mm. Actually, there were two builders. Two builders. One built one side of the street, one built the <laughs> other. <laughs> yes. One, the builder on one side said, no, no municipal trash collection. The builder on the other side yeah. said, we're leaving that out of our documents. So yeah. the problem is they recorded the registry of deeds, which gives an obligation to them as well as to us, a legal obligation. If we're going to change that, then we're probably going to have to redo their documents because you're talking something in the order of $1,000 per house but in order to get it redone. But okay, this, we, uh, Rusty's got the floor. Well, I think, I think we ought to be able to come up with some solution. Well, we've already had our, our thing is saying that five units or less. And if, uh, it, you know, if, if, it, if we've been doing it all along, it's kind of hard when you've got one side of the street that has pickup and the mm -hmm. other side that doesn't. Well, was, was this one um, project that was approved and then they sold it or something like that? They're, they're yeah. e this, this is very unique and it would not have happened this way. These are individual lots. So let me give you an example. They're if not, you, right. They're not. If you think at the top of Drake side, uh -huh. for example, um, you have three units on the left-hand side that were built by a developer. It's one lot and has three units on it. Uh -huh. Across the street, it is two lots, and they each have five, I believe, oh on it. God. So it's not this situation, which is one building one on lot. one lot, and that building just happens to be a condex, so it's right. split in two. It is merely the bylaws that are preventing, the bylaws of their planning board approvals when that one lot got written because it's two people who own one structure. They did the right thing by having condo docks, you know, who's going to pay for the roof, who's going to pay for the mm -hmm. common space. I mean, that's the right way to do it. Um, to what you're saying, you know, is there a way not having any of the legal background of can we just cross that out and re-record it? I, that's pretty much a no. But there's there could be a process we could look into that's simplistic, but like Fred said, it's usually rewriting docs. There are a point. lot of those in town yeah. that are like that, and you're probably going to have better than 100 of them that you'd have to redo all the documents on. Well, I, I, my thing is, like, if it's a condex, that's two units yeah. right. on one piece of property, yeah. that's much different than a condo project, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when they're on one side of the street or the other. And I think to find some relief somehow where we've already said on this board that we said five units or less mm -hmm. uh, that maybe we can work something out maybe if we work it out that if they help pay for the thing we will work it with them to do something I, I, I this there's got to be some way to do that um, My what do you mean Rusty what you just said what do I uh, mean? about it work there's got to be a way for what if, if we have to redo the condo docks maybe they work maybe we they have to pay for the cost of redoing their condo docks Mm -hmm. With an understanding, perhaps, that, that because it fits the selectman's normal, normal policy, policy, that it wouldn't be held up because it would be a shame for someone to pay a thousand dollars to redo condo docks and then get to the two boards that would have to approve it, right? And then not have it, right? So but that, it, it would fit underneath in it with our five units or less. The it all part. depends on how the recording was made. Some yeah. of these documents not only have it in their in their documents exactly. for yeah. their bylaws and the condominium documents, but they also have it on their site plans, mm -hmm. which means the site plans would all have to be redrawn or refiled. Well, then we can at least look into them. I think it's it, it, more than a blanket statement of, no, we're not going to do it. I think we need to look a little more harder into those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the plans become the, you know, what Fred has just said, the plans become an issue. I mean, these are engineered, stamped, yes. recorded right. plans that So go did back these to people the all receive a letter saying their trashes are going to be picked up? They will, because it's in their documents. Okay, so what are we going to need to have them do? Come in, um, or what? Uh, or, well, you or, need or, to make a decision, and you need to have the money to back it up, because I don't have the money in the budget to, to do each one of these, and they could be as much as a thousand or more dollars per unit mm -hmm. in order okay. to do it. Uh, Regina wanted to speak. Yeah. I um well, I think when it's in the condo docks, I mean, I understand that we have the policy for five or less, but 
I mean, didn't some of these bins, they should have never been issued out or they were issued out in the improper way. So I think that um, the best thing to do would be to do what we've already started doing and then, like Rick said, if the board wants to re-examine the entire policy, which we're probably going to have to look at some pieces of it after the meeting on the 15th, then we should. And if we want to do for five or less to everyone, if that's possible, then we can reissue them out properly at that time. But I think for right now, what's being done is the proper thing to do. We're simply just enforcing the law that we already have. And um, is that... Can I just build on yeah. your one comment? I would agree with you because I have three streets that come to mind. Campbell Drive, Summerwood, and uh, Peniman Lane. Campbell Drive's town street, so I can literally drive down there and serve that condex. But if the condex is on a private street mm -hmm. and yeah. within a private, I so this is where the people have to drag the uh, carts down the road. Exactly, and a number of people. <laughs> what you're referring to. Yeah. So, um, like the Summerwood, you know, one half of that community was developed as a condo, and the other half was developed as. Is, is private developers. So it is really weird that we only pick up one We've side of the street. We've got several law besides those three. Yeah, but those are the three right off the bat. But yeah. it, my point is that each case, each subdivision is going to be unique in its own way. Exactly. Uh, I would ask the board not to try and pass a broad stroke to solve this uh, in a, because it's not that, it's not that simple. It hasn't been that simple for us. And I wasn't yeah. saying to a broad stroke, but there are certain no. indications in certain times where we might have to take a look at some of them. Right. Mm. No, I totally agree with that. Okay. And Mary Louise. Can we go around the oh, board first? Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you <laughs> had you. Uh, you know, you've inherited it, a disaster. We've inherited a disaster just because yeah. things have been put together right. foolishly all along here. <clears throat> and it's... Uh, but. The only thing I worry about is you're talking about doing this on the weekend of July 4th. What if the people haven't set up a private thing? Are we going to end up with a, a lot of trash that, that's, you know, like down at the beach and stuff like that? Are we going to end up with trash that is going to really destroy the place for the, for the July weekend or for, that, for the summer period? I mean, that's, that's a thought to, to give, right? It is, and, it, and that could happen any weekend. Um, yes, July 4th is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Uh, the purpose of an April 1st, I mean, hours have been spent uh, getting these letters put in the right packages with the right supporting documentation. Hours have been spent trying to compile the lists and go through every single condo doc, reading them and putting it all together. April to July 1st is quite a few months to, to try to give them the heads up uh, to work with a, waste, a different waste company. Um, that would be the intention. Like I said, it's possible that we can't get them all. Um, we're going to try. We're going to keep picking at it. Um, but we want everybody to know that beginning first, if it's out, we're going to take it. Should, and, should it be that the, that the uh, condo association or the president or something responds? Is there a thing in that letter saying that they should respond well, that, to you? That's that why so many letters went out. It, not only did they go to probably the president, but it went to every individual okay. member of every Right, condo. it didn't just go to the right. head of associations. Right. It went yeah. to So owners. there should be no excuse for, we didn't know. Exactly, exactly. because instead of an uh, association maybe posting something <clears throat> on a board, <clears throat> you know, that nobody read, this went to every single owner in the association. Yeah, super. Yeah. Are you finished, Jen? Yes, yeah. thank you. Mary Louise. Okay. In order to prevent the horse from leaving the barn, we should be proactive. We should have been proactive and send official memos to both zoning and planning so that they know right from the beginning when they're approving these condexes and developments and whatever, because I had a little exchange with uh, uh, Tracy Emmerich last year saying that the uh, only uh, group who can uh, control the waste is this board of selectmen and we should be making it very clear and we should probably do it at least once a year and send an official letter from this board out to both planning and zoning 
so they understand the parameters because there's still a lot of stuff right now. They're, they're still approving. There are more condos on 1A. Okay. I understand and your I think, question here. What do you say to that, I Mr. Walsh? I think we need to do it. I believe the zoning board and the planning board know um, what the selectman's policy is, and you're going to confirm that, I believe, on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's no question about that and normally what happens is we send all that information to the other boards and departments as well mm -hmm. So they should have all that in writing. <coughs> so there's no question about what your policy is. Yeah. I agree with Fred I think everybody knows what the policy is and some well, people they haven't want been to knocking themselves well, they want out to dance around it. it and I've watched and I've seen how it works But I think everyone understands and we will enforce it. Yes, and okay, I think well, at this point we have to make sure that we have a consensus that this board is going to back all of those letters that have been sent out. Uh, Jim? I guess. Yeah. And uh, the other part that we need to have a consensus on, if there are some considerations as of the ones that Rusty raised, uh, those will be dealt on an individual basis. If they have to be. Yeah. Because that's all we can do. We're all, uh, we have a consensus here, right, Regina? I agree. Mary Louise? Yes. Are we that going this to have letter will be supported, yeah. and we're going to follow through on this, and we'll s see where we go from there about um, yeah. the condo recycling and trash policy. Are we going to have Chris and or Jen at that meeting with the businesses? I assume so. Yeah. Um, so let's let them continue with their report. <coughs> or what they would like to say we that's basically the gist of it is that um, the, the only other half of that memo that I have is because um, yeah, I want to discuss the memo there are some you know um, I pointed out to the board there are some things as a copy of it that I've uh, already taken out of the budget like for instance training sidewalks uh, reduced the federal stormwater permitting um, one Did you other. read all of these? Yes, yeah, sure. I'll go no, through it. No, I'll read them for oh, you. Okay, go for it. And um, just so that, um, what? Yeah, especially yeah. the transfer. I think this gives people an idea. Um, so uh, comments on default budget. The department has looked very closely at its 2019 budget, and we recommend the following cuts in budgets and programs so that we can stay within the default budget line. That the federal stormwater permitting costs be reduced to $10,000, that's a savings that they're taking out of the budget of uh, $10,000. That tree move removal only be done on an emergency basis and therefore lower the line from $25,000 to $5,000, saving $20,000. That we postpone all sidewalk maintenance to the future and that therefore, therefore we'll reduce the line to zero, savings of $26,000. That we, that we only replace. replace or install high priority signs such as stop signs, speed limits, and yield signs, and therefore reduce the line to 4,000, savings of 4,000. That we not order any new refuge or recycling carts, therefore saving 10,000. That the sand only be replaced after we run out and therefore reduce the line to 5,000, a savings of 8,000. That we postpone a number of sewer projects and therefore reduce sewer maintenance line from 170,000 to approximately 83,000. For the months of January and February, we postpone filling one highway position. We currently have three vacancies. Given time it takes to fill these positions, the potential savings that has already occurred is approximately 8,000. We have lowered all training lines to what is necessary to meet licenses and certifications required. All requests for training to meet road scholar clarification will not be approved. So, um, then the we have reduced the contracted snow clearing from 75,000 to 30,000. The savings is about 45,000. The sum of these savings is approximately 166,000. Further reductions to our budget would next come from service, services provided to residents. If the board would like to make additional reductions, I would recommend that you consider the following. 
close the transfer station at 11 a.m. on Sundays. The potential savings would be $21,099. Reduce the line painting contract by not painting the white fog lines. This would save approximately $7,397. Eliminate the brush clipping contract. Have staff do some of it and transport any chips to the Campbell parcel. The potential savings would be about $18,000. Reduce the funding establishing established for compensating the police department for details they provide the town during construction jobs by another 5,000. We annually carry 20,000 and we have already reduced the amount to 15,000. Eliminate testing for PFOAs as they are not currently required by the New Hampshire uh, DES in this year's budget. The potential savings is 14,000. Eliminate the beach sweeping contract for Sun Valley. The potential savings here is about 15,000. Now you don't have mentioned there about the um, the brush pickup, but that's something that would be similar to. We would the fall brush pickup, the fall brush and leaf pickup. We would still. Do. Will we continue? We would. That okay. would still be. Okay. So um, I think that this gives people that might be watching out there, and people that might read about it in the paper. Um, that there's a lot of has to be done here because of the default budget. Um, and uh, Rusty? I, I got a question. You, you put on here, uh, close the transfer station at 11 o'clock on Sundays. <laughs> How about if we alternated Saturdays and Sundays? So oh. two weeks you do, uh, one, one week you're open Saturday, the next week you're open Sunday. That would still allow the people two time, at least twice a week I mean, twice a month to get to the dump, either on a Saturday or a Sunday, or they could go all four days, but it would be Saturday or Sunday, not both days. That's that's if, all overtime, and that's yeah. Um, I, I I can't say as I'm really excited about that, and I'll tell you why. Um, the transfer station. I've been here since 2011. It's always been closed on Tuesdays. It's yeah. always been closed half a day on Thursday. Um, if you set up a toll booth on Tuesday, you'd gain a lot of money from people that come down to the gate and turn around. And we even put a sign up on Landing Road that says the transfer mm -hmm. station's closed on Tuesday. So um, the message is not well received, if you will, that we're closed on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. It's just we, we get a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be more difficult for the... Um, uh, people if it was closed um, on alternating weekends. The reason why we picked the half a day Sunday is in talking to the staff, they said, you know, after noontime-ish on Sunday, it's dead city. Everybody's at a cookout, done their yard work. Um, you know, we might get the onesies and the Twesdays, the weekend warriors, but he said not yeah. that, you know, they couldn't. I see it all the time because I have a lot of clients. I'm open on Sunday, and people come. Um, they want to take their uh, stuff to the um, recycling mm -hmm. and the trash area. And uh, so a lot of people really, it would be hard to get that message out there. About oh, I, I understand it would be. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking at this as it's all overtime both days. Yeah. Are we, Another part of that is that... Um, during the summer, the 13 weeks, we're still going to need to be open for us open on Sundays right. till 11. That's about what time it takes for us to go do Sunday's route. So we already need to have the doors up mm -hmm. open and the guys out in the truck. Yeah. So I've had people ask, so yeah. I figured no, I, I would ask that no, question. No, but that's one of the reasons I now, think it's important. Do we to want to address that. all this right now, Fred, about these uh, uh, recommendations? If you don't, well, you have to start addressing them. If you don't address them in the near future, what's going to happen is there's going to be larger cuts in larger places mm -hmm. because we still have to get that hundred and almost $200,000 out of the budget. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> then let's uh, go over this right now. The first part of the uh, savings is what you've already done with your budget, so it really Correct. doesn't have to be discussed. Correct. Um, the second part, which isn't listed there, but we'll, we'll mention it first because uh, it was, I think Regina was the one that brought it up about the picking up of yep. the uh, 
uh, debris after the winter. I think this is something that customarily has been done through the years. Uh, we've even in the past stopped the fall pickup with everyone complained about that. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that that's something that would probably be mainly because there hasn't been as bad a winter as usual, right. although it's been bad enough. Um, so do we have a consensus that that is going to be, we're not going to do that, the pickup, yeah. the spring pickup? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a reset we have there. Then um, I uh, would, what, is, what do we all feel about um, the tr um, transfer center closing at 11 a.m. on Sundays. We understand what Jen just said yeah. makes kind of sense. They got to be there anyway to 11 o'clock. So what time does it open? At eight? Nine. 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 Eight. 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 Yeah. Uh, and I think what if people are going to go, yeah. if I was going to go to the transfer station, I'd rather go early in the morning, get it out of my sure. way. Yeah. So I could watch football or whatever. <laughs> so does anyone want to comment on that, or do we have a consensus that that's something we can do? I don't have a problem with it. I just so it will, all the hours will be the same, but on Sunday it will close. At it would be eight to eleven eight versus eight. eight and to some three. people okay. are going to get burned a time or two before they get it. Yeah, that that's right. the way it's going to be. It's hard yeah. to change people, but any uh, reason to not agree nope. to I that? Think it's fine, Jim. But so we have that consensus. Reduce the line painting. Um, does anyone have a problem with that? No. no. So we're no. on board what, with that. What, what do you mean by the line painting? The the center line? Center lines, we'd still do the white uh, delineator line on the outside, typically called the fog line. Yeah. We'd hold off for a year. Okay. Line's yellow. Talking to him. The um, safety, from a safety point of view, are there any studies or anything? I mean, does that cause any kind of a safety problem? Because I wouldn't want to see us cutting a budget and cutting something that's going to be a safety issue that's going to cause more money in the long run. They're, they're you know, they're technically not required. Um, I think we've done them. I know we've always done them because uh, as we all age, uh, I too enjoy the, the fact some nights that the <coughs> lines are there because it helps you maintain control of the road or at mm -hmm. least, you know, where the road is, is or isn't. Um, you know, certainly, they're not going to they're not going to disappear overnight. Um, you know how traffic <clears throat> wears out lines in the middle of the road. Well, it's to the edge. Most of the time, we don't we're not wearing them off of vehicle. Yeah. So I think we could get away with one year, but I wouldn't recommend that we exactly not mm -hmm. do it ever again. I just think when I was just in Florida, I noticed that in fact it, it came to my attention mainly because of the person I was with that driving the whole time kept riding on the white line and it goes clink 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 clink. clink. Okay. And uh, they put delineators in yeah, there. Yeah, that's really big down there on the white lines, the same ones yep. we're discussing here. And uh, I think my friend was being annoying. But um, I think if we did it just maybe for this year and yeah. it'd be worth it to see if we have any problems with like address Chris it. And like Chris said, there's still white along. line there. It's right. not like it's disappeared. Yeah. Okay. So we're still going to do all the crosswalks. We're still going to do all the stop. Yeah, the lines. crosswalks, I think, are and very all the necessary. directional arrows yeah. and things of that nature. Those are safety, more safety related. So it sounds know. like we have a consensus on that. What about the brush clipping contract? Uh, I think that that's probably a good idea. Having some of the staff work on that, if mm -hmm. it's possible, and if we have any places where it becomes a problem, we can maybe approach it. I don't have a problem with any of the suggestions. Okay. Uh, the next is reduce the funding for compensating police details. Anyone yeah. have a problem with that? No. no. No? Eliminate testing for the PFOAs. Does anyone have a problem with that? No? And eliminate, this is one that's going to be controversial, yeah. I can tell you right now, um, about eliminate beach sweeping contract for Sun Valley. Um, it's not a safety issue, but we certainly will get a lot of calls. You get a lot of calls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. a lot of calls. And he does a really good job. Um, yeah. But yeah. I was asked to put together all the things that I thought were. Mm -hmm. I, for one, don't think this is a good idea. Right. Uh, Mary Louise? I agree with you on that. Um, hmm. It might be a good idea, but I think it's not going to be worth the... Uh, I, 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 the uh, Rick, can I come in on that one? Yeah. We, well, let's we're talking, let her finish. And we're talking about uh, discussing further the JOP plan with the state. 
one of the things, I don't want to see the town of Hampton's street sweeper operated by a town of Hampton employee. Okay, wait a minute. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, talking about. This you is want, for, wait this a minute. Is, no, wait, no, Mary, you please. want to save this money. This is beach sweeping that we're talking about right now. I so understand. And we're going to solve it first. But and what if you want to bring up, you want to bring up, you can yeah. bring it up after. I'm talking about. Well, we're not going to talk about it. Uh, well, we're talking about this eliminate beach sweeping contract for Sun Valley. The potential yeah, sure. savings so this is here is about actually 15. on raking. the beach. This I, is yeah. the raking. Sun Valley yeah. Seabrook. I should have used the word raking, like to, beach raking. Yeah, yeah I'd like to add in just yeah. that that's another one of those things that if you don't do it, you're going to lose dollars mm -hmm. because people will come to the beach and say, Ugh, I'm not coming back to this beach. Mm -hmm. So that's something that should be done. I mean, it, it would be a savings, but I think people. Rusty? No, I think we should. Continue it. Okay, oh. so we have a consensus yeah. that we're going to continue the beach sweeping, Let at least for right now. Let me ask a quick question yeah. on that. Sun Valley is almost a private beach, and the people down there aren't making such a huge mess. Are, is it really messy enough that you need to rake? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just haven't been down there for a long time. You know, of all the outside operations that I've, we used to hear about it, yeah. but I've used Katie landscaping for the last four years. He stays in regular phone contact. He hand picks the trash out of the, the rakings, leaves the sand and that he can back on the beach. Uh, seaweed he puts in for dune restoration. He does an excellent job. Okay. Um, it does buy me a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. Um, it is a, it makes, he makes my life easy. So and I, and is I think his he brings contract fifteen thousand dollars? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So it, I think we might want to um, make sure that we continue with a fifteen thousand yep. yes. dollar contract and not any more than that. Right. Yep. I can tell you at least from the town hall's aspect. Yeah. It saves us twenty calls a week if he's not there. Yeah. Um, I, I okay. know because I hear a lot of people talk about this issue. <laughs> okay. Um, That's good. So we have a consensus that all of that is. Uh, Per, you know, we're all on board with all of that. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, now, as far as the trash and recycling, did you want right. to? Just yeah. a, can we just make, if anybody's a general comment to make on this whole thing? Yeah. Mary Louise. Um, I do. I, really quickly, I, I think we should not be using our employee and our street sweeper, which we paid for, to clean Route 1A for the okay. state. That's and I, we might save a little. And then the other thing that I can mention, because um, I've been looking at this and talking about it, uh, default budgets obviously are a problem, and this okay. is what you're We're going to talk with. about the default we're, budget. We're, but I want to address what you just said, Mary yes. Louise. That's something that will be under the JOP and something we might want to talk about then. That's not something about the, re the street sweeper. But it's I think money. it's something, yeah, it's something it's that money. needs to be done. We're looking to keep the beach as clean as we can. Yeah. They've done it every day for years, so we're just not going to stop it overnight. Yeah, um, and if you have other things with. to talk about the default budget, let's wait because that's coming up that's coming I, up and you'll be able to talk yeah, about but it I don't then. Have a regina with do you have anything proposing. i just have a general question about this memo so if we do what you propose less the uh beach sweeping contract for sun valley we're right. going to keep that that's what you've just eliminated about i don't know two hundred thirty thousand dollars out of that budget so i appreciate the work mm -hmm. that you've put into doing yeah. that since thank we did you. get a default thank budget you. that's a good point um Jim. Yeah, I just want to make a comment to people that they realize that all of these cuts, it's not, it, it wasn't fat. It's yes, all stuff right. that's going to affect services, and it's all right. stuff that also can also affect in some way when you talk about training and stuff like that, can affect safety. Yes. When you're talking about trees only doing an emergency basis, then you're not being proactive and keeping right. up with it, and you might have more emergency basis. So, you know, it's, it's not you're just cutting stuff out. Right. It, it's, you're making some hard choices. And we could, sir, we could we, cut we, some of these and it'd be yeah. more than, I mean, an emergency is an emergency. I think public works have proven that in the last three years right. that yeah. we, we generally get one all or some. So, yes, it went down to 5,000. That's a perfect example. But if we need to spend 10 on trees because it was an emergency, it still has to come from somewhere else. There isn't that. Um, we don't want to try a town tree 
going to a house like what you see on right. TV every night on the news. Yeah. Nope. Get in rusty. A couple of things. If and, and I'll bring it up. The trap, our trash, where it's costing us so much more to do the recycling right now. Mm -hmm. Would we be cheaper to send it all the trash? <gasps> no. <laughs> I, and I know people want to recycle. But ultimately, it's the dollar, the dollar that's costing this town. And would it be cheaper to send it all as trash? Oof. Could be, but it's a contractual issue. Mm -hmm. uh, when I floated that idea by waste management, they pointed out and reminded me of certain terms that were in the contract that we agreed to a mm -hmm. number of years ago. So um, <coughs> we are still working with them on that particular area. But. Um, there's definitely a balance point if you were to look at two right. graphs that went like this when they hit at that point yes it would be cheaper to put and it that's on why the I bring it up. so I there is still that too. little bit for that percentage yeah, that yeah, isn't yeah. contaminated it's cheaper to recycle yes. but where it crosses it it's so no longer the, saving. what the facts are are the facts are that we have a contract that we need to keep up until July of 2020 correct and really, uh, we have to keep in mind uh, that we signed that contract in good faith, yep. and it has to stay just the way it is until then. About There's one year from now, we'll yeah. be in the, we'll negotiate. We'll have the new bid documents drawn up, and we'll, we'll be in the process of going out to bid to get new contracts established July 1 of 2020. And that that type of thing that you're addressing. Um, is going to be addressed in the new contract where we have <coughs> more flexibility to, as the market fluctuates, to move our materials somewhere else. And right now that, they're committed to waste management. That's why we're working particularly so hard on this trash and recycling mm -hmm. and having this other meeting that we're going to have is because we want to be prepared to um, negotiate yeah. the right way with future contracts and with inviting different people that might want to be part of it in the future. Exactly. Yeah, Rusty. I got one other question. You know, we've, we've heard talk here of a, uh, a glass crusher, possibly doing something like that. Do we have a cost of what that would, would cost us for a crusher? I didn't look into the actual cost because there again, the market is going to dictate Mm -hmm. um, the recycling market is fluid, and the market's going to dictate uh, what the market wants. For instance, you could go out tomorrow and buy a baler and bale cardboard, but if the market, the end user, doesn't want it baled, <laughs> why bale it? Um, the same thing with glass. Um, when the gentleman from NRRA was here, he mentioned that there was people in Canada that wanted glass bottles. Mm. They don't want it in color crushed colored form. Right. They want, they'll understand broken bottles, but they want it as bottles. Mm -hmm. No toilet bowls in it, no window glass, just bottles. Right. So if th that's the way they want it, then I wouldn't run it all through a crusher. Now some <laughs> of it we can probably use crushed, but there again the market is going to dictate what the market will want and, and what they'll pay for. And that was my other question on that too, is do we have, if we do crush it, do we have a use for it? Roads. Two uses are it can be mixed with some gravel um, to then use on roads, but mm. we don't have any roads that we're trying to build right now um, or, or, or majorly reclaim. Uh, the other primary use for it, it's now being uh, recognized as instead of the waste management buying daily cover, which they put sand on top of the, the working face of their landfill, they can actually cover it with crushed glass and mm -hmm. that'll be satisfactory and meet DES's rules. Right. Mm -hmm. So that will be a, an, a, a possible re cost effective reuse. But those yeah. are the only two that I know. Well, right. I think when we have our meeting on April 15th that we need you uh, to be one of the driving forces of this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and Fred also, mm -hmm. um, and because he's been t so experienced with the way this all works, uh, of possible ideas and possible different ways we can deal with this. So those are, uh, I've been told that some of the business people have been meeting and they uh, might be willing to buy the glass crusher mm -hmm. 
or a partner in some way. So if you can think of any possibilities that might go <coughs> like that, uh, would okay. you know, considering some type of partnership of what the business community could do, if you have any ideas like that, that would be a good thing to bring forward. Um, I know that um, I don't know exactly how these gra glass glass crushers work or how they last, but I do know, I think we all know Sheila Nudd. She's been making uh, things out of um, glass, mm -hmm. and she crushes the glass in cement um, mixers, and, um, and then she makes art out of it. Yeah. But she gets a lot of crushed glass that she uses in her garden. And um, the only point I wanted to make is she goes through cement mixers like there's no tomorrow. So <laughs> it's been very expensive for her. In fact, she's finally given this up. So, you know, we don't want to start something that's going to cost a lot of money, you know, whether we get some people to help or whatever. Mary Louise? Yes, we do not want the weight of the glass bottles, jars, et cetera in the recycling, do we? Because I think Fred mentioned something about the price going up per pound or whatever by if waste management. If you recycle right, right now, again, the recycling market there is fluid, is, right. glass is recyclable. Right. In other words, if you, if you have trash. a bottle and you put it in the recyclable after you've poured out the liquid, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is completely recyclable and it is, we are not charged a contaminated fee for that. But if we're going by weight, if, if we are going by weight and you're emptying my recycling cart, it's got a bunch of glass bottles in it, or you have a business um, at the beach with well, 50,000 glass bottles. If you can bottles, divert um, glass for 35 a ton somewhere else and not pay 185 a ton, yeah, basic economics, it makes sense. So I, it's the weight. You know, these options that you might come up with, we'll be glad to hear them on the 15th and before. Yes. Uh, Regina? Yeah, I have a lot of stuff that I want to add based on what Rusty said and also what Aunt Mary Louise said. I've also been meeting with business owners, and I think that in 2020, the board is going to have to highly consider whether we should be doing business with the waste management at all. Because uh, I met with a company, five of the guys from all over the seacoast met me Friday morning with a constituent and there is like you say the market is completely changing right now mm -hmm. and we can literally seclude the plastics doesn't matter whether they have food on it doesn't even matter plastic styrofoam and they will take it off to wherever they take it to because they're going to be using it to make jet fuel so I mean there's Indeed. just like a bunch of stuff going on and they told me right now like we, we're talking about wheat and Rusty's saying are we better off just like throwing some of this stuff away? Well, if the weight is cheaper at the waste rate, then we might be better off throwing away the right. bottles right now because it will be cheaper. And those are the discussions and that I think. And that's, what, like, that's what I'm trying to bring up. And that's it will go into the landfill and it won't hurt the landfill because it's just sand. Glass well, just these sand. are the, the discussions but that I we're going to But I just want, have. I mean, I did, yes. I met with these guys, they came from all over the seacoast and they met me and we you could literally be the first municipality to do okay. something like Well, this. and I want to go over that too, like you met with these people, but these people need to come and talk to DPW, they need to come and well, they need to... Well, that's why I sent them the email right Well, they, these people need to come on their own to them, mm -hmm. to DPW, to Fred, if they want to um, put, be put on a bid list. So they need to come and talk to our people that we Good. have in, right now in charge. And um, so any other people that you have, they should be going both to DPW and to Fred because there'll be a lot of other people that are gonna, when the bid opens, uh, there'll be many people that are there. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, Mr. Chairman, that we haven't talked about, and that is, and I, I'm taking it, we're still gonna do it this summer, is that all, of, all the uh, refuse that comes from the carts at the beach all goes trash because yes. it's so badly contaminated. Uh, people don't source separate at the beach, even though the <laughs> state's required to have a source separation policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't because they don't have the personnel to run it. So last year when we actually took them off of the recycling route right. and treated it all as trash, our, our, our contamination would drop like mm -hmm. a rock. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think that we're still going to do that this summer so that we don't have the 
the problem of even more tonnage at 185 but, miles. But it's not just the state, too. It's off stuff off yeah. the side streets. That's, that's it, well, yeah. it's, it's, it's right. right. So it's not just the state that's coming. No, it's the beach. And the state yeah. is aware that they that this problem exists, and they're aware that they contribute to it. Now, one of the things that we need to um, we're, are you going to be bringing in recommendations of how um, many barrels should be going out to different businesses? Yes, there's a draft uh, document. So that's something that's going to be discussed. Yep. yep. Yeah. While we're on the, you know, there's been some, <clears throat> I think, some misunderstanding of the beach and that area is that we pick up, how many times a week do we pick up at the beach during the summer? Seven. Seven. Seven days. Is that every business? Pretty much. Yes. But that's on Ocean Boulevard. No. Is Ashworth. it on no, Ashworth also? It's Ashworth. Side streets, Ashworth. Side street. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I've heard from some of the, the motels, they only get picked up three times a week. So yeah. they get Monday, Wednesday, Friday, summertime, and only two of those days off time. So it's mostly the restaurants and... Um, so it's not everybody at the beach. It's yeah. only... No, it's no a, because yeah, they no, don't pick only... mine up every... I mean, I didn't ever want it picked up three times a week. Um, the way my history was for years, years ago, 10 years ago, oh, it was even more... They, it, no, it was every single day they picked it up. And maybe in the winter time it wasn't, but mm. I think they even did then. And I kept saying, as being here at these meetings, you know, you don't need to pick it up three times a week. For me, once a week is fine. Mm -hmm. But so this is one way I think that um, the DPW and the, I don't mean your department because it was before you were here, they uh, continue <coughs> to do or it could have been cut back years ago and mm -hmm. they just didn't. Now I hear the yep. same thing that Rusty hears. People say, well, no, they only pick it up for me three times a week. So I think that needs to be very clear and that's something that should come out of the April 15th meeting is we want to know exactly, does it, is it every day or is it three times a week? Because I talked to a big uh, hotel person and he said his is three times a week. Yes. And it's on one of those roads. Mm -hmm. So we really need to understand this. And I think when we come out of this meeting, we need to understand, uh, I think that this board has to come to a decision exactly how many barrels we're going to pick it up. There's going to be some people that are disappointed, but we're going to make sure it's fair to everyone. Regina. One question on the restaurants. There's a restaurant, actually, L Street Tavern. Mm -hmm. Is that fall in five, seven days a week? I'd have to look at the actual list. I'd okay, because now that I know, um, hopefully they'll have a representative, but I know yeah. that's been one of the issues because he's on a side street, but right. he's a restaurant. The yeah. rule's not the same for him, so... Just, no, that's something you know, that hopefully we can like address in this whole I mean, process. I can even remember fielding calls the last couple of summers. Hey, I had the National Budweiser Convention infiltrate the hotel and all my recycling containers are full. I know I'm not supposed to be picked up till Wednesday. Can you come? And, you know, pass a note along to the... And that's why I said we're down there seven days a week. And if there's an issue, we're not going to ignore it we're yeah. we're going to work with the business owners okay. they have a lot less room down and the beach. we want to have a clear and it's this is not just for the beach though this is right, for people exactly. uptown route one is the same oh, yeah. uh mm -hmm. exact uh yeah. obligations correct yes yeah so we want to have yeah. a clear policy that everybody understands mm -hmm. and that's what we plan to come out of this april 15th meeting about and we're going to be looking to you okay now do we have um do you want to say something, Mr. Welch, about the trash and recycling? No. Nope. Do we have any closing comments about this? And this discussion's over until on the 15th, or we can bring it up next week again. Yeah, I just want to say at our meeting on the 15th, I'm hoping we can have a discussion with the businesses about the um, uh, quantity of glass bottles that accumulate in the summer and what's the best way to handle the situation because the weight of those bottles is going to add tremendously to our cost. Well, we know one thing, that every barrel is only supposed to have a 75-pound limit on them. So do you do that for the, uh, for the restaurants and businesses down yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. Well, once it's decided uh, how many barrels are going to be picked up, if people want to bring their, uh, their 
bottles to the um, transfer center, mm. Mr. Welch, what happens there? Do they pay extra or? Commercial waste is charged. Is, Commercial is waste is charged, charged yeah. according to the ordinance. So yeah. wait per pound and so uh, there's there's going to be some changes and uh, we hope to understand it and we're going to be paying it uh, listening to everybody we're going to have the meeting here in this room I know that uh, when we had major uh, trash and recycling uh, meetings in the past this room has never really been been past occupancy but we'll have business representatives uptown and yeah and anyone that wants to come and any mm -hmm. um, it's not just business it's yeah, all it's anybody. Right. anybody yeah but we're just gonna you know if, like mr welch said there's the upstairs if we is necessary but i don't think it's going to be that big a deal mm -hmm. um in the past we haven't attracted that many people so i don't know why it would be now does anyone have any other feeling about that using this room no i don't know Okay, so we're finishing up. What else yeah. did you want to say? One quick thing. Uh, first of all, thank you for being so proactive and so fast on showing your adjustments. That's, that's a big help this early. And I did a little uh, research because I've been concerned about the, uh, the default budgets and okay, MRI we're talking and about assessing. The default no, budget I, just, next. I just want to, because well, they've gone to a lot of, of trouble here because the operating budget was turned down for the second year in a row. Uh, in uh, 2008 to 2012, every operating budget was approved. But okay, we're going to talk about the budgets, Mary Louise. So we're not going to talk about them right now. We're not going to talk about them right down. now. We're so going to talk about them next. Rick, I just want to say yes. thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you again for what you've done to show yes. what Mary Louise just outlined. You had less money and you made cuts. And, and thank you for coming it. in tonight. And if fast. you want to sit there to add to any comments about the default budget, but that's what we're talking about next. Okay. All set. Thank you're you. all set. Thank, yep. thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Stage left. Thank you. So, number uh, two on our selectmen's five agenda items for discussion is the default budget. Now, do we want to talk about the 2020 budget or the default budget first? Well, I think you know you we talk about we're talking about the default budget you know we've already started that process with having these people in mm -hmm. I think we need to have all the departments come in well, over the next month and how and and each how, one the, is how, affected. how it's affected and, and what their proposals are okay I think that that's what we should do mr. Welch is um, for all of the re, you know the meetings that we're going to have not next week because that's about recycling and we'll be talking about our two weeks yeah starting next week we okay. can put let's have each week ha except on the 15th have a major have, department come in yes and okay. we'll talk about how the default budget affects them we got two to go okay so uh and then when we have our meeting about the trash and recycling it will be uh just about that and Mary Louise? I'd like to follow through on where we're going with this uh, assessing stuff and how that okay. is impacting how that is impacting okay, our tax well, that's rate. That's not what we're talking about now. So number two is the default budget. So we've just decided what we're going to do there. Um, does anyone else have any comment about that? Yeah. Um, yeah? So who's going to be next week? Do we know? Uh, because I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Which probably, is fine. Probably, but, probably yeah. police department. Yeah. Okay. They okay. seem so, to be the least impacted of all the departments. So. Okay. Now, if you have any questions you want me to ask for you, you can submit them to me and I'll follow up on them for you if you'd like. Okay. Because that, all right. Yeah. So feel free to do that. So we've cleared this default budget. This is how we're going to work with it. The next is working with the state. That's huh. item huh. three. Uh, Jim, did you want to start with that? We're, you know, we're not going to solve the, all the problems with the state right, right now. Right, right. I think, I think some of the things. I think, I think number one, you know, working in the JOP, we've started, we've started the draft. I think some of the things Charlie said tonight are really pertinent. That that you get parking lots that they're charging that are empty. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you charging? And if people can use it, 
you know, I think that's one of the parts of the discussion that we really should have with them and we really should be yeah. talking about and that. And I know that I've talked to Mr. Welch this week. The JOP is in the process. They Don't are reviewing it. You they are reviewing it. They've, they've suggested they're going to send us a list of a couple of suggestions. They're not particularly concerned. They think the JOP is fine the way it is. Mm. They know that certain things have to be added to it for certain reasons. We're working with Public Works on trying to find a way to eliminate those uh, containers at the state park with all of the smelly material that they take off the beach. So we're working with them on that. Um, I think we're going to have a JOP before we open the beach. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Yeah. Rusty. Could we, could we uh, send a note off to, to them and ask oh, them sure. to think about what Charlie brought up here today? Yes. Yeah. And we're see we're going to, yeah. Let's see if we can do that so that we, when the JOP comes back, it can be part of that. We have that. Um, we're going to talk about parking lots as number five okay. under new business. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. And I know, uh, Regina, you've been uh, concerned with working with the state, so do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, I think Charlie's right. I talked to him for an hour the other yeah. day in the municipal lot, and you know what? We're going to bring that up under town okay, parking lots. Okay, so forget about the lots for a minute, but this should be part of the JOP. You know, I mean, what everything he says is right on. Mm -hmm. Right now we're charging yeah. people that are either working down there or coming up because the residents on here might be people from the other side of town <clears throat> yep. that want to go to the beach because it's not crazy down there yet. And I mean, it's not fair that they're getting charged. And I think that along that, you know, I know the town's trying to do some things to... And I, and I think what Charlie was saying during the daytime, yes, we can charge those people, but at night and overnight... But I mean, when they do get a ticket in Hampton, even though it's on state property, the person that gets the ticket... They got the ticket in Hampton, okay. and it reflects on Hampton. So, well, I hope you know. I hope that the state realizes. That so the we are going to when they send the uh, <laughs> JOP letter, we're going to be uh, making our recommendations after they submit it to us, right, okay. Mr. Welch? That's Perfect. correct, and and uh, we'll see what they send back in for their requests, and I'm sure we'll have requests going back. Yeah, so that's what we're going to yeah. deal with that. I can tell. I have talked to them about parking. As yeah. far as the state lots are concerned, mm -hmm. and they went to the legislative oversight committee, and had their ordinance, had their statute changed, their regulations changed, so they can charge all year round, and that was one of the things they said to me was that mm -hmm. may happen, uh, that we charge 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, from the the normal summertime, it mm -hmm. goes from two dollars to one dollar. But they may charge all, all night, all winter if they want to. And <coughs> I discourage them from doing that because I don't think that's the proper thing to yeah. do. And they have already cut back, for anyone that's not aware of it, the amount of time they're charging now, it was even more before. They've, they have relaxed it. Yeah, to some they, degree. Yeah, at the beginning when they first started charging, it was, a, it was even more, uh, a longer period of time. So I'm not saying that I agree that it shouldn't be discussed, but... I don't think they're just going to roll over either. That's how they felt about it in the past. No, the, more thing, money they, go ahead. the more money they make here, the more money they transfer out. That's, That's all correct. I know. Yeah. The one thing they should do is when they issue parking tickets, it should be under the state law, not under their departmental regulations where the commissioner makes a decision uh -huh. as the judge and jury of whether or not the ticket stands. Hmm. It should, like any other parking ticket, if you object to it, go to court. Ah, good. They don't do that. There's no accountability there. Hmm. Yeah. So these are things that we're going to talk about when we get this GOP letter back. Mary Louise? Yes, and I'd like to address the matter of individuals bringing glass bottles on the beach, and they, they consistently refuse to try to refuse a request to have people standing, pay some high school or college kids to stand at the stairway. It is not... Uh, too challenging, and if I walk in with my basket, the person should be able to say, pardon me, but show us what you've got in there, and if it shows glass bottles, they can't go on the beach with them. It it's should be easy idea, enough to enforce. I doubt if it's going to happen. Well, other, other communities do that, and I don't see any reason why. It's a risk. It's a risk to the people who come and bring their children to that beach. Mm -hmm. 
if you're getting glass well, in, when in the we sand. Do, do you, when we go but back and forth with and the JOP, we can bring these different things up. Talk about but Park Ranger. Yeah, and you know that's probably the way it's been for the last 80 years. I don't know how much we're going to be able to change, but we can try to change some of it. But we're not going to be able to change it all. We've it's going to be about a compromise. It is against their regulations to have glass on the beach. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if they were to, uh, if a lifeguard was to see glass, seems to report to a police officer. Right. Yeah. Person could be removed because the lifeguard has requested that be and done. And then it's but the town of Hampton way. that and is how, doing Where do we have the police that are going to And then we do. have to pay them. So, the, you know, these are problems that we're not going to solve them here tonight. Right. So, uh, There's also individual rights. You can't yeah. just say to somebody, open up, I want a seat. But, yeah. You know, you can in a private in, a private enterprise. Or That's correct. Like when they're you can't be going to people and saying, open yeah. up. Yeah. So this, what, what, oh, why we're talking about these... Uh, uh, agenda items are these are the going to be the top items that we're going to be talking about in the near future Good. so we are going to be doing that Thank the next you. thing that we're going to talk about is crumbling infrastructure it's number four on this list Regina why don't you start with that <laughs> crumbling infrastructure I like that one yeah well I guess well we got to fix our marsh pipes so that was good and mm -hmm. Aquarians in there fixing their water line I guess they've had yeah. a couple of uh, <laughs> breaks along the way or weeks along the way but I guess it's a good good uh, good idea that they're working on that yeah actually Rick if you don't mind I'm gonna bring something up under here because it has to do with water infrastructure mm -hmm. I know that um, one of my jobs that I do I don't know if a lot of people know is I'm the county manager for water innovations Alliance Foundation it's a nonprofit organization and they're going to be having a, their annual, well, one of their conferences, June 5th, and it's actually going to be in D.C., so I'm pretty psyched for that. And they, what they do is they get private companies together with governments, the EPA, things like that, and try to figure out ways to, you know, with technology and innovation, replace infrastructure rather than just, you know, taking the same pipe and replacing it over and over again, like with Hampton. You know, we've done a lot of development here, so maybe just replacing things isn't what we want to think about for the future. Hmm. And desalination is one of the things that I've worked heavily on, and it seems like the federal government might be waking up a little bit to it, too. And the Department of Energy has invested $100 million hmm. into infrastructure. So I'm hoping just by one of my jobs that I do that I might be able to go grab some information and bring it back, hmm. because I think that Hampton... I mean, it's happening everywhere. We're not the only ones, but, you know, we have had some things happen to us over the past couple of years that we really need to start looking toward what needs to be obs obsessed for infrastructure. And I know the town manager has already been talking with Public Works about sort of putting together like a overall map or picture of what needs to be replaced and putting a dollar amount to it so that we can maybe figure out a long-range plan for public works and, mm -hmm. and that's uh, pretty much what we've you know how we've always done it and it's basically that uh, five to ten year uh, uh, future is supposed to be in the capital improvements a lot six of years six years total six years yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. you know it is something that we always do, and this is maybe a, a good place where we could do a five to seven year try to figure out about infrastructure improvements, and we could do that here at this board. We're going to discuss the um, goals and objectives of the other departments a little bit after, but does anyone else want to say anything about crumbling infrastructure? Rusty. One of our crumbling infrastructures that we really don't realize is, and, and we talk about it with all the flooding that goes on, we have to look at Metal Pond, Eel Pond, yeah. and so that. Those have never in my my lifetime ever been dredged. And when I was a kid, there was eight or nine feet of water in, in mm -hmm. the Metal You're Pond. Right. Yep. Now there's eight okay. or nine inches. Yep. And so we're gonna have to take a hard look at, and see what's out there for federal, state and federal grants, which I'm sure there are, especially when you're talking about all the flooding and everything else, How about either dredging it or buying a dredge and having it for doing a number of places that we have. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that we've, we've looked at, you know, pushed off for too long, but I think that's something we have to look at. That's yeah. our infrastructure. You could, because if you did 
Meadow Pond and Eel Pond, which is the one right on, next to Winnicunut Road, yeah. right by the right by the pump station there. Yeah. That there is so full filled in and with silt. sand and silt yeah. that if it was dredged out, it would give the water more places to go. Mm -hmm. And the same with up at the Eel Pond, I mean the Meadow Pond. And the one that's behind the dam could probably be used to be yeah. dredged too. Yeah. The new dam we just put in. And this is the way it used to be done hundreds of years ago. The farmers <laughs> did this on a regular basis. Right. And it hasn't been done. And so, and so I think that's one of the things we have to look at. And we have to look at what's out there for federal and state and federal money because I'm sure there is some. So that's going to be yeah. something we're going to discuss under uh, flooding. And that's a good point. When we start our in depth flooding, um, uh, talks, maybe that's some uh, something we can really key in on, our dredging of those ponds. I think that's a good idea. Excellent. Did you have anything about crumbling? Not not anymore, um, other than they just we need to continue yeah, what we've okay. been doing. And Mary Louise wanted to. Yes, now, ladies and gentlemen, in conjunction with the big project on 1A that we've been talking about and the state rebuilding and that will merge in with building the new bridge and all that good stuff. What about the drainage? Because part of your problem that you've got with the ponds mm -hmm. is the lack of drainage and you can speak to that because yeah. you know right well, in front of your house. That's something that's, you know, that it has, has been addressed and they've come to the plan and who knows when it's ever going to happen and it's very but, disappointing to me that it's but shouldn't happening. it be part of the state's re, a state's responsibility? Well, in doing the structure. drainage yeah, there's on one A, there's nothing we can do about it. It's because not it's, our infrastructure. It's their, it's their ballywick or be, whatever you want to be careful. Call. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because when the state makes their plan, if they attach those pipes to our pipes, it becomes our problem. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And then you have to test that water and make sure that it's clean. If it's not, you're going to have to treat it, <coughs> which may mean, under the statutes now, building a, a treatment plant for all the water that okay. comes down through the drainage system. Yeah. So you need to be careful. So that's something that's going to happen in the future, and we're going to concentrate on our crumbling be uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. here in Hampton that we have to, are responsible for. Regina? Yeah, and what Rusty said, too, I think some of the state reps were working on getting a state appropriation for uh, state dredging. So... And this I'm, is all part of what that is. Exactly. Right, so, I mean, because mm -hmm. they no, have the same... About the harbor. Oh, it's not? Oh, it's okay, so no. gonna... When they dredge Hampton Harbor and Seabrook Harbor, because the state licenses buoy markers down there, okay, the state mm -hmm. has to share in that cost from a state appropriation. Ah. It's not the cities and towns that share in that cost, but it's going to be the state. So they've got to come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars to give the Army Corps of Engineers to help pay for this, this dredging. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we've dealt with cr crum crumbling infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Number five on the selectmen's the agenda world. items okay. is the 2020 budget. And Mr. Welch, why don't you start with that and give us a little breakdown on how this is going to go. Well, I can tell you already I've, I've instructed department heads to formulate a budget based upon this year's budget, which is, which is a default budget. Mm -hmm. I think we need to start there. And then we need to look at what needs to be done in addition to that mm -hmm. in order to solve problems that are accounted by these departments. And we need to make a list of that. We need to make a list of those expenses. And that needs to come before the board to determine how we're going to address those items beyond the regular budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary Louise? Yes. Uh, this is where my concern about the assessing situation lies. If we're not getting accurate uh, evaluations of properties, especially new properties or the every five year reval. For example, I believe that there are individuals who have improved their property and no inspection has been done by assessing and some of the properties have been uh, renovated on the outside and some renovated on the inside and no one has made an inspection. One individual, one case that I've been made aware of where the individual has owned an old property, sunk about $250,000 in interior renovation, and no one, no one physically went in and witnessed that. There was no uh, visit 
to confirm what was done and the increase on the person's property value was something like $62,000. Okay, now we're losing. Let's, we're let's, losing. Let's ask Mr. Welch about this. We're losing um, money. Cuz I believe the way the law is that the people don't have to let them in. They might have to let them but in if, if, if they, they have a permit to do uh, something inside uh, the house. I think Mary Louise is talking about something else. And that is somebody's done work without getting valid permits which require inspection by the building department, and then those plans then go to the assessing department, okay? If you don't get a valid building permit and something happens to your property, your insurance can say goodbye. It's not our responsibility to pay you off yeah. for the damage to your property because it was done without proper permits. And they come in and look at our permit files when they have to pay claims. So it's dangerous for them to do that. On the other hand, if you see somebody who's actually doing a lot of work on the interior of their property and they're having people work and come and go and things are going in and supplies are going mm -hmm. in and there's no building permit on the front of that property, you need to call because you're paying for something that they're doing yeah. because their taxes aren't going up but yours are. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a matter of being watchful. Everybody needs to be watchful about what's going on and they need to be truthful. If you're going to do ten or twenty thousand dollars worth of work on the inside of your house, you need to get a building permit. Mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. Uh, now say that again. You need to get a building permit if you're doing work on the inside of your house. Yeah. For how much? For for, for, for what? For anything. Yeah. If you're changing the interior of your building, you need to get a building. Other permit. than painting, you pretty much yeah. need a building permit. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're 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 attaching something to the building, or you're removing something, attaching something new. Mm -hmm. That structural work that you're doing, uh, even though it may look cosmetic, needs to be approved. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. needs to look at it. Yeah. Fred. But that has nothing to do with assessing, because assessing can't go in unless unless the there is. I'm is getting that. Yeah. Permits. Okay. What that happens is though point. is you get the building permit, and we see what's on the building permit. We can assess you if you refuse to let us in, right. based right. upon what's on the permit. Yeah. And I think that's what Mary Louise. But was if they're talking open about. to letting you come in, and that's I a can tell story. Fred confidentially after this what to specific parcel this is, but we are uh, we are uh, not. But they to, don't have to let someone in. No. And if you but don't, the, you don't always get the full value of what they put into a property simply because you may be taking something out and putting something right. in and replace it. Right. And and that something you put in doesn't have that much value but to this, it, but it may look good. The instance I'm talking about, the owner was very open to having somebody come in and see. Mm -hmm. Well, if so. he if they were open and they had a building permit, then the property would have already we would have seen it. Yeah. Would have already been seen and already been assessed right. part of that, anyways. Right. So mm -hmm. it's not like they get away scot free. So a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar renovation is, is only that, came out to sixty two thousand added on their uh, assessing card. Yeah. I'll I'll tell Fred what I'm talking it could, about. It after. could be that. Mm -hmm. Could be that depending on what they they racked out of the building. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so any other things that you have to say about the budgeting process for two thousand and twenty. Well, just to backtrack when I made a couple of uh, comments here, between 2008 and 2012, when we had individuals who were knowledgeable about assessing, for example, Ben Moore was very knowledgeable and he was on uh, those boards, uh, the budgets all passed um, from uh, uh, 1997 to 2003, from 2008 and... 2012, uh, the uh, budgets uh, were going along quite nicely. Uh, and uh, then recently, of course, we were running into these default budgets. So some of this, I think, hinges on proper assessing um, uh, to get accurate values. And I, I'm not terribly comfortable, I think, with, with uh, assessing. So, uh, Mr. Welch, when do you uh, feel that we'll actually have uh, re where we will be reviewing um, their people's budget request? <coughs> when will that start? Budget requests are to be submitted to my office by <laughs> the end of June. You should have it by the end of July after we've gone through it with each of the departments mm, and wow. torn out whatever we think is inappropriate. Yeah. So that's when we're going to get hot and heavy with the 2020 budget. And oh, Regina? Yeah. 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 yeah, I have... Um, well, over the years, I've, I've worked pretty closely with Christy just when I have questions, you know, numbers make sense to me, so I go in and ask her. 
and as far as taking budget committee member comments in for my past three years, you know, I think I've heard a lot from all yeah. different sorts of people yeah. and also from people that do watch the budget committee meetings. And uh, I asked Christy about possibly having a schedule, which she already had done pretty much. And it's an Excel spreadsheet completely different from the budget book. And uh, it would be an a, a, like a, I said three years, but she actually has it already done for five. And it just shows averages and actuals. Hmm. And I think she is in the process of finishing putting 18 in there now. I'm not quite sure. But I think that tool might be something that if the board agreed, if we could get that out as soon as Christy was ready to provide it to the budget committee, it might sort of give them something to look at so that if when we get through the budget process, and it, actually I would like it to go to the Board of Selectmen first before we even get the budget, obviously. So approximately when will that be? I would have to double check with her, but I think she's in fairly good shape on it. I would say mm -hmm. it could probably be definitely be done before the budgets are done. But mm -hmm. I have not, I would definitely want to verify with her first. Yeah, so these are the type of things we'll check with her when she comes in for her department reviews, which all of the departments are, um, scheduled to come in at quarterly but you know now we're going to be inviting people to come in to talk about the default budget and stuff like that right. so we'll have um other people um so rusty did you have anything about no, that and jim no okay so then the next which is number six uh but those top five were pretty much unanimous for, with everybody um, and you know we're going to be dealing with flooding now, Mr. Welch. Uh, what is the um, the what is happening with the Warren article that we did, where we have you know some flood studies being done? Both studies are in progress. Um, they're going to take a major portion of this year to get them finished. They're quite yeah. large. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to do. Um, once they're finished, it's going to generate Warren articles that you need to review and study, along with the reports that are issued by the engineers. Uh, there are a lot of different things that we need to look at when we get those reports back. I mean, this, the main beach area, uh, which is off of Ashworth Avenue, and, and of course there are a lot of things in Ashworth Avenue that haven't been finished yet, uh, is going to be one particular type of problem, while the upper end of the town is going to be another particular type of problem. Mm -hmm. We have many problems up there that we have to look at from yeah. the standpoint of what are we going to do with the water and how are we going to do it. Mm -hmm. There are no drains up on, for, for instance, Kings Highway, which is one of the main areas that we're, we're studying at the current time. Mm -hmm. That needs to have drainage put in. It needs to have drainage brought down. And, the, the, and there are a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, um, everybody up there floods, even when there's no flooding. Right. They all run sump pumps. Yeah. Most of them do. And what do they run it to? Because there are no drains, they run it down to the sewer. And we know that's happening. Mm -hmm. We can't go up and file a court case against everybody up there. We need to build appropriate drainage facilities up there so they're not doing that. That plus flooding, that, flooding that, that, that takes toll on some of the folks up there because they're so close to the water levels because there, no, no dredging has taken place in 300 years and the ponds have filled in. Uh, we're eventually going to have meadows up there that are just going to flood with water on top of them. So mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of houses abandoned up there for that reason. There are a whole host of different issues that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. One of the things that most towns are difficult to actually comprehend or to actually get to the point of spending money to solve our infrastructure problems. And I think, Rusty, you brought this up earlier. I think we've all talked about it at one time or another. We need to solve those infrastructure problems and they're going to cost a lot of money. And that's why we're having default budgets because we're trying to solve them, but we're trying to solve them on a small piecemeal basis. Mm -hmm. I've asked Public Works to put together a comprehensive analysis of all the drainage systems in the town, of all the roadways in the town, of all mm -hmm. the sidewalks in the town, of all the sewer lines in the town, of all the drainage lines in the town, uh, and what it's going to cost 
to fix all of those and bring them to a reliable standard mm -hmm. so that we don't have flooding and we don't have different, different problems with sewer backups and so forth. Uh, and bring that to a, a standard so we can see how much it's going to cost to fix the whole town. Mm -hmm. Not at once, because it can't be done at once. Mm -hmm. But we have to have an idea where we're going. Yeah. And, and, and we need to have thing, that separately. Another thing that could be prioritized. The, um, um, I think that you mentioned about the one end of town and then the other end of town. We have to make sure we don't forget about in between. Well, because there's uh, the flooding is everywhere. When I when yeah. I say one at a time to the other, the, yeah. the item that goes from, for instance, Ashworth Avenue, which is everybody refers to Ashworth Avenue because the flooding mm -hmm. is up the street, goes from the town line with Salisbury, or uh, yeah, with uh, excuse me, so Seabrook and and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Hampton Falls, all the way up to Winnicott Road, mm -hmm. that whole area, yeah, all the way back and all the way from the ocean front. And the next one goes from the end of that at Winnicott Road all the way to the Northampton Town Line. Mm -hmm. So the study is including the entire ocean front of the town mm -hmm. and the, the main arterial areas in that. So we yeah. get an idea what that flooding is about, mm -hmm. where it's coming from, and how we try to fix it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying not to leave anybody out. Good. Mary Louise? We need to share the information that we get with that planning board so they need to understand about developments in some of these they'll, places. They'll be, the, the, it will be shared with them because whatever yes. the study is done, the, each department, yeah. each board like that will have some type right. of presentation, I'm yeah. sure. Because right. this little Plus thing about lift, report. Yeah. lifting your house on stilts yeah. for three All feet. of that stuff is going to be really discussed. And yeah. it's, we're going to be discussing probably before we get these reports because what I've discussed with Fred is these reports aren't going to come till close to the end of the year. This is and good. then there's going to be some determinations that have to be done for Warren articles. Yeah. But th again, what we're talking about here are agenda items for discussion, so we realize this has a priority of things we oh, want yeah. to talk about as right. we go along. Regina? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Fred, what he was just bringing up about having the whole picture of the sore and yep. everything you can possibly imagine, because all this flooding with the excess water, that mm -hmm. is also infiltrating our wastewater treatment plant, mm -hmm. which is in yep. the process of getting uh, reconfigured. But I think that having that big plan, even if we're not going to act on it immediately, from what I've been following with federal infrastructure money, the bigger the plan and the more options and choices we show of ways we have to possibly solve it, I think will increase our likelihood of getting money, especially if we're being proactive about well, it. Well, we've and been proactive. And yeah. I'd like to bring that up, uh, like what you just mentioned about the wastewater uh, being Ill, in, infiltrating the system. That's been a problem here for forever. Yeah. Yep. And it's something that the town has been proactive. Mm -hmm. They spent $12 million replacing all of the pipes at the beach, the main part of the beach, mm -hmm. like down where the Ashworth Hotel to the south. Mm -hmm. All of those pipes were replaced. And it's substantially less infiltration today. Mm -hmm. If that hadn't been done, we would really have a terrible problem at mm -hmm. this point. So there has been proactive all through the years. we got to continue it and maybe add it to our list of priorities. Yes. Yeah, just because yeah. it's gotten so much worse. Yeah, um, yeah well, the one, the, uh, I believe that the, pro that's the oldest private sewer system in the state, wow. Hampton Beach was, and it was all done with clay pipes and they, yeah. they were completely <laughs> infiltrating. And it supports much more than the town. Yeah. Do you have any more to say? No. no. Um, okay, so I want to move along because we have some other things to do here. Uh, the goals and objections of the three major departments. I talked with Fred about this too. Uh, like I think, Regina, you mentioned about doing a five to seven year plan. Um, every department probably doesn't fit into where a five to seven year plan can That's be done, true. according to Mr. Wells. I was talking more about what Fred just described with his map of like all the soil lines yeah. and everything yeah for and that's cat. that's the type of thing we can do so if you have any I, I think at times um again we will be putting them on the agenda but mm -hmm. under old business uh or any of the times the people are here you can always check on the goals and objective of the major departments mm -hmm. right particularly when they come in quarterly you know that's right. a good time to hit them up but um, and then the communications. Be does anyone else have any comments about the goals? There mm -hmm. for that. Um, 
Then 8-1 is communications between the board. Does anyone, Jim, did you want to say something? I just something? think we should have open communication always, and we shouldn't be talking about other boards here. Yeah. We should be communicating with the boards. We, you know, chairman can be communicating, representatives can be communicating. So rather than going after people and stuff, I think an open line of communication is going to make it much better. Budget committee, planning board, zoning board. Mm -hmm. And it's I not agree. up for us to make their decisions. They're right. an elected no, no. board, and they have their own uh, uh, things that they're supposed to come up with. Mm -hmm. Rusty, did you have anything to comment? No, on? I think Jim's Mary right. Mary Louise? Yeah, except when the town interest overrides, for example, the waste selectmen have control over the yeah, waste. We understand. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Regina. I just want to say that whatever whoever has control over it should control it. And we also have to remember that all these people were all elected the same way to their boards. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So so we've got so everyone understands about our discussions. We're going to use this list. I'm going to use it as a priority. That's good. And we're also going to every of course the main priority that will come every week is whatever is a problem at right. that time mm -hmm. that we're going to deal with. Um, the next discussion is about the discussion of the election. Um, we just want to go over, I went over this today, and uh, so I'm just, we're going to just go over it lightly, um, and if anyone has any comments. Um, the, shall the town, uh, because this has been mentioned in a lot of different ways, including when I was at the uh, Hampton Area Commission, there was a talk, uh, Tom McGurk came there and discussed about having a visioning um, you know, uh, commission or whatever. Because uh, Article 10 was about the $18,000 uh, planning services that was voted down. The master plan. The master plan. Yeah. Um, so there is some talk of people that would want to get a master plan study group going. Uh, as Tom talked about it, the way he saw it, he figured it might take up to three years to get uh, the yeah. money allotted and yeah. this and that. So he was talking about a study for at the, in the beach area. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that the, the voters turned down. I was kind of surprised, really, at mm -hmm. that particular one. Does anyone have any comments about that? They didn't want to plan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a necessary document. I know. Yeah. Really I mean, it's a necessary yeah. evil. Yeah. So, yeah. Shouldn't it be down? I, I don't think it was understood. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a lot of, you know, bad talk about it from certain groups, and yeah. I, I think that hurt. And I yeah. think that's a good point, because we are discussing um, the uh, election results. And I think one reason why so many things might have been under, misunderstood and I think we probably have a consensus here that how many, uh, well, how many were there? 50, 50 articles. articles. Mm -hmm. That 50 articles is too many. And yeah. every board I've been on, they talk about this every year. Uh, several of the years we've been able to keep them down. Several of the years we haven't. But I think that's something we need to consider more in the future because mm -hmm. people, it was very visible at the day at the uh, well, it's hard, to keep, it's hard to keep them down when, when you try to keep the budget low and you don't want to, yeah. you know, so you want to keep the budget so it passes, so you got to keep it low, and then you give people a choice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know it is a, long, a lot of articles, but I think it gives people a choice to decide what they want to spend their money on well, and what they don't. Well, we may have to reconsider that, yeah. though, because the budget didn't pass anyway. Right. And uh, so maybe people do want more things in the budget, and this is something we have to consider. I think if we do like what we're talking about doing, like having these, like, okay, so we already know Fred's probably got a whole pile of things for next year anyway. So maybe if we just start talking about them more on an ongoing basis and then maybe the smaller ones, if we decide we want to well, try to put them in the budget and see what happens. So this way people will watch our meetings and they'll be like, oh, you know what, they've been talking about that for like... And that's what months. we've done in the past. We, you know, Fred gets his articles together, his right. Warren articles, mm -hmm. and we brought it up. We'll have to just concentrate on that a little bit more. Mary Louise? I'm relieved that the turnout gear yes. article passed. Okay, we're going to wait. We're oh. going to go over it separately. Oh. So, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the operating budget? So, we've talked a lot about the operating right. budget mm -hmm. here tonight, and so yeah. we won't waste a lot of time on that. But we would like the fact 
that if we had a budget that passed, we wouldn't be discussing all these other things that we're going to have to give up. True. So the next one that I thought was um, apropos is Article 17, which is the capital reserve for the purpose of purchasing firefighters turnout gear. So you're very happy with the fact that that did pass. But, but I want to see follow through now that that fund is going to be created and I think we should get memos from the fire department to see what is being purchased this year and the and subsequent years. I want to see how that department is being updated. I want to see the well, that's what you need. second sets of gear showing. Okay. And I want to see instead of having 10 in one year or something, spread it out so that everybody in that department is covered. So when we have our, uh, our Chief AYOC yes. here, those are the things you want to discuss. I want some follow-up. Uh, does anyone else want to say anything about the, the gear? Thank you. But I thank yeah, the public. We thank yes. everyone yeah. for voting for that. Yes. For those, for Article 18 is uh, the uh, $414,616 that did not pass for four firefighters. This is something that gets brought up on a regular basis. Yeah. Personally, it's been voted down this year. I'm not so sure we should put it in again next year. I agree um, with you, except that we are reaching a breaking point here with the size of the community and the size of that department. Well, I think we need to take a look at right. you know what the people voted for. It was right. sixteen thousand. I mean, sixteen hundred and three to eleven thirty-eight. Yeah. Any other discussion? Do you have anything to say about that, Rusty? I I just don't think. I know it's uh, a disappointment. It was a disappointment. I didn't. I don't think that the uh, the department came out. I, I don't. I think they could have done a better job selling it. Mm -hmm. I think the chief could have done a better job selling that. I don't think he did a very good job. Now, not just so much just for that particular article, but I'm one that believes that if these things get turned down, they need to take a year off before mm -hmm. coming back again, because yeah. um, I think the people have spoken. Um, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the 115,000 to engage services of a license revaluation? And that voted overwhelmingly yes, and that's part of what's been our discussion here tonight. And I think people have the same concerns that you have, Mary Louise, and that's why they voted for that. So it's pretty simple that the people did want that. I think these, um, when you take a look at what did pass, you're going to see, we're going to see a lot of things passed because people, they're not cheap. They know what they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, article 20 is to vote to authorize the selectment to instruct town manager to appoint a code enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. This overwhelmingly failed. Yeah. I think this has been put to bed for several years. Right. It gets brought up every three or four years that we should do this. Yeah. And I, people just don't want it. Yeah. It's so too bad, though, because a lot of stuff slips through the cracks. It is too bad, but I yeah. think we're, waste, we're spinning our wheels yeah. to try to do something that people don't want, so we need to take a break from that. Mm -hmm. um, Article 21 is, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate 590000 for improvements to streets? They uh -huh. overwhelmingly <laughs> agreed they to this. <laughs> yes. 2,364 to 445. So oh, yeah. they're all concerned about the crumbling infrastructure. The roads are in terrible So condition. that should be our number one crumbling infrastructure. <laughs> and I wanted to say, too, on top of that crumbling infrastructure, yes, I didn't bring up roads. And then Jen Hale and Chris Jacobs were able to submit to, uh, a P I think, at least a piece of one Conant road right for, to the regional economic development right. plan for 2020 yes. yeah. Yeah. just because yeah. they have a lot going on next well this right. year actually yeah. but yeah roads I think probably everyone in this town yeah. wants uh, yeah. the roads so fixed. 22 was 300,000 to the road improvement again it right. handily <laughs> passed although not quite with as much zest as the one before. So <laughs> I think that people don't like having to pay, but they, they realize it's they a like necessity. They like getting state money. Uh, shall the town yes. of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 243000 for the purchase of a Department of Public Works one-ton dump truck and whatever yeah. 
again, overwhelming mm -hmm. support displayed to the DPW. Yeah. And yes. uh, I think that should be noted. Number 24 is the same type of thing, um, overwhelmingly supported about uh, doing the culverts over at the King Kids Kingdom. Yes. Again, people are willing to be supportive. 25 is about the five-year lease agreements and um, again, overwhelmingly supported. And we, appro we approach, uh, appreciate all of this uh, that the town um, residents have been so supportive to the D DPW. And Article 26 is the 91,000 for the purchase of a trash ejection trailer, again, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly supported. 27 is uh, $85,750 for the replacement of a water line, overwhelmingly yeah. uh, supported because people want water and they want it to be as, come as, you know, well, That's the water line of public be. works, isn't it, Rick? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's really good. So they really can put good. out a fire now if they yeah. have Yeah, everybody water. needs water. Um, <laughs> number 28 is... Uh, street lighting. Street lighting, overwhelmingly yes. passed. Yes. That's, what, that's the difference between living in Hampton and living in Rye or Northampton. Mm -hmm. They don't have street lights. We do. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes people say, well, uh, the taxes are a little high. Well, if you compare them to many other towns, they're not. Yeah. Um, but Hampton is a town that likes these not necessities right. and niceties. But it doesn't and say ornamental lighting. <laughs> no. Article 29 is uh, the sidewalk for disabilities improvement capital reserve. This was uh, a no by... Well, 1639 to 1076 and it's disappointing because uh, it's we know it's not what really needs to be done but people aren't willing to spend the money did anyone want to discuss that on number 30 is the town article 30 is the town vote to raise and appropriate 20,000 for the Household waste, again, people definitely want it. Mm -hmm. um, 31 is 11,000 for the cemetery, again, overwhelmingly passed. And, uh, and in that case, the money was already sitting there. It's yes. Just a drawdown. And number 32 is 40 uh, for a new front loader or a new Holland tractor loader for cemetery department. Mm -hmm. Again, the cemetery, oh, yes, they definitely want it. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there is a balance of 500000 yeah. generated from the sale of cemetery burial lots. And that's a, a good point, though, Rick, because in those cases with the cemetery, there's money there to be drawn down on. It wasn't a raise and appropriate. Mm -hmm, right. There was no tax impact. And the Article 33 is uh, to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of removing trees from the High Street Cemetery. Yeah. Um, uh, Again, that comes out of that trust. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I know someone that was just, uh, know of someone that was buried there last week. And um, the widow, I talked to her, uh, and she was having bought her uh, plot back in the 70s from Roland Page. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. she, and she's always thought, oh, I'm so, you know, it's there waiting for me. Well, when she got there, she wasn't happy with what she saw. Yeah. And she thought, really, in her opinion, uh, it was a state of disrepair. Um, so those are something that I think that are, uh, again, a lot of people have added support to take that money. And we need to do everything we can to make the cemeteries a little bit better. And yes. I think uh, that, uh, that, again, is in a separate elected board. Yes. And so we can yes. we can ask them, but that's still yeah. up to them. And right? we there's have a said lot some that could be done at the cemeteries. I know they've done a lot this past couple of years, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. We're yeah. working on a major improvement program, but unfortunately yeah. the budget didn't pass. So yeah. none of that will happen this year. What the things that you were planning on helping with at the cemetery? Yeah, because none of that money passed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's too bad because I was telling. Um, I was explaining to this lady how uh, we are trying, you know, the 
cemetery trustees and we've been working with them to try to make yeah. things better and we'll continue yeah, we'll to do continue that. continue to do that. Yeah. There were years um, of neglect in that cemetery. Yeah. And in Article 34 is the 124750 for Parks and Recreation right. Department and that overwhelmingly passed. And mm -hmm. number 35 yeah. is the sum of 71668 for upgrade the town information technology that overwhelmingly mm -hmm. passed. And as usual, Article 36 is uh, about the uh, charities, and that always is a pass. And it's good that the citizens of Hampton are so generous. 37 is 50% uh, 50,000 to continue the process of converting stored yeah. paper documents. That passed. Article 39 is to the glass doors upstairs. People are very excited and feel like got a good value on all the glass doors so oh, far, yes. and it's gonna only get better. And uh, mm -hmm. Article 44 is uh, 55,000 um, for the conservation fund, and that overwhelmingly passed for them land. to make some more yeah. buy some more land or yeah. get it under their jurisdiction. Yeah. Good. So I that's was, I was just pointing Article forty that didn't pass. Article, Article forty was the which uh, is which one? the na the uh, naval the oh, camp yes. and naval uh, committee. Yeah, mm -hmm. I meant you to know, go over that. I, uh, I I felt uh, you know that was something that I think we were honored by the fact that the Navy Yard thought enough of us to to do that and uh, I think we get a, a pretty good bang for our buck with the sailors come down here that work on our mm -hmm. with the rec department and stuff like that and I wish it, I would like to see that passed and I think that um, with the Commission the committee that Regina's working with it sounds to me like they're probably going to be doing some fundraising um, mm -hmm. and that's what people have to they maybe voted against this but that doesn't mean they can't be supportive of the fundraising right. yep. and right. And there might be people out there that want to do some fundraising, and that's that would be a good position, a good oh, uh, place the, where people the can USS put their Hampton interest. USS Hampton was all privately funded. Yes, and maybe we can do that again. So Article 44 is, uh, we did that one. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much all I have oh. for discussion. Does it 40, 47. Yeah, 47 I thought was pretty um, the sidewalk? odd. No. No, the... The flag, flag, the, the, yes. flag hold, the brass flag oh. holders for our veterans. Yeah. I think that was. Uh, I'm not really quite sure. I would think yeah, that would that be was the cemetery for the flags. association's responsibility. Well, you know. I don't see why that should be have to be raised by the public. Well, somehow, um, if something like that happens again, we're going to have to make sure that those people, you know, like in this case, it was uh, Mr. Bennett, um, and he's done a lot. Uh, being the leader of the uh, American Legion Post mm -hmm. 35, but you know maybe we just have to work a little harder. I that's something I thought was automatically going to pass and it didn't. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions about the election or anything sidewalk. they want to bring up? The sidewalk <laughs> on which one? You're talking about the one near your house. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest they bring another one forward because it doesn't look like that's I a agree. top priority for the voters of Hampton. What was the, what, which number was that? 49. 49. Uh, 40. 48. 48. 48. Yeah. Yeah. 2,122 to 620. Right. That's a I message. think that uh, there's a message there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's a wrap up of that. And then the, we've already discussed the solid waste impacts, and now we need to talk about the town parking lots. Um, Mr. Welch, can you tell us what's being done about the town parking lots right now? You mean in conjunction with Route 1? Uh, no, I'm no. talking about um, uh, anything that, like the things that Charlie has brought up and oh. um, Regina oh. has brought up quite a bit. Um, I, I've talked to Mr. Welch and he's mentioned that with the default budget it's going to make it difficult because there isn't as much money there. That's yeah. true. Right. Uh, we need these, the funds that we take in on the cemeteries goes to reduce taxes and uh, it also goes to keep our park and recreation facilities repaired and in use and, mm -hmm. and, and usable for the people in the community without having to raise taxes. Um, it's difficult to 
think of trying to change the structure without and, and not make as much money as we have been making because we've tried to emphasize the income approach to running the parking lots. Mm -hmm. uh, there obviously are areas in town where we, we have parking lots that we don't collect anything in. And, and there's a reason for that because our residents have to have a place to park when they go to the beach or they come uptown or whatever. Uh, but we have a few parking lots where we in fact collect fees for people who go to the beach. Uh, and most of those folks aren't local residents. Uh, yeah. Local residents don't go down there during the summertime uh, and, and, and use Ashworth parking lot by and large. We have a few, but not many. Um, I know we've, we have in the past, the board has authorized us to, uh, during certain activities down the beach, to allow free parking for people with dump stickers or parking stickers or town stickers. Hmm. And in m most cases, we may get two or three in the parking lot during that week. Mm -hmm. to take advantage of that. So uh, what we see is we don't see a lot of folks coming from other areas outside the town to go in there and use those parking facilities. On the other hand, we need those facilities for people to park in in the wintertime because yeah. we need to get them off the streets Good. and we need to provide them a place that's, that's, that's reliable and friendly and, and protected for them to park so that our, we can plow our streets and maintain them. Yeah. Um, if the board wants to change how we do all that, and I'm not sure you do, but I'm not sure you don't, uh, you need to kind of, I think, give us a, a blessing on what you would like to see as individuals done mm -hmm. to change what we're doing in those parking lots. Mm -hmm. uh, I realize that Charlie comes in, he has good ideas, uh, but in many cases those ideas cost money to implement. Mm -hmm. For instance, putting in the ticket machine. I have no idea what that's going to cost. Uh, the state doesn't even buy theirs. They lease them because they don't want to have the expense of owning them. Uh, and there's some merit behind that as well. So if the board would like to give me, like we did with the five most important projects, mm -hmm. if, give me what you, the five most important things that you ought to have done in the parking lots, we can look into those mm -hmm. and come back with some concrete answers for the board. Yeah. We can look at what Charlie wants as well and see how that factors into the, the overall cost and what revenues will be, what we can accomplish with that money, what we can, what we can accomplish with the, the change in the parking areas. So, yeah. so what, I, what would be my suggestion, um, because again, this is one of the um, uh, things that we uh, talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it's been brought up plenty of times by Charlie and Regina's brought it up several times mm -hmm. now. Um, I think that after the uh, April 15th meeting, what's the next meeting after that that we have? It'll be two weeks, no. Uh, the 22nd is a regular meeting. Uh, the, okay. the 15th is a special meeting. On the 22nd, yeah. if we could have, um, uh, this is something that Jamie Sullivan usually mm -hmm. is in charge of, have him here for the agenda on the 22nd okay. and we'll go over and make sure everyone has all their things they want to talk about about parking is that okay that's, that's fine I think, I think we've talked about it and, and I you know we've talked about doing the possibility of the meters before mm -hmm. and you know you're, you're gonna have some costs for them I, I think leasing them may be a way to go too. we, we yeah. can talk to the state I think that's a great idea to yeah. find mm -hmm. out why they went that way let's not do it yeah. Portsmouth has them too, so why not talk right. to Portsmouth and, and see how they do it? We will yeah. have Jamie come in, and one of the things that's going to need to be brought up at that time is if there should be parking meters on the side streets also. Yep. If that's that should ultimately be part of the where discussion. the town wants to go, um, as you know, we have a lot of side street parking problems, <laughs> and uh, there are various ways to solve that, so we'll take a look at what those costs would be if, in fact, you did something like that. So if everyone wants to think about it for next week's meeting of uh, things that you want to talk about yeah. and we'll submit them to Jamie and Regina, you're not going to be here. You want to submit them to me again. I'll bring them up to Jamie. Yeah. I just want to say about the, uh, I mean, as far as doing the whole streets, I mean, that's going to cost a lot of money, but we have a, a way that you can decrease traffic flow and make more money in the municipal lot would be to stop by getting one or two of those and putting them in the municipal lot. Because mm -hmm. now you get to whatever the state's rate is, two bucks, like if you wanted to shave it down to 150 an hour, 
So people go in there for three hours and they pay four fifty, and they're not getting slammed for thirty bucks, and they're only there for three hours. Mm -hmm. And that lot can be set up so that you'll alleviate a lot of traffic, even getting to Ashworth or One A, if people come in on One O One and come through Brown Ave. Okay, down that beach all the time, my whole life. Mm -hmm. Charlie Preston's saying it, but Charlie Preston's right. It will work. Mm -hmm. And I think the state has already done it. Now Fred's saying they lease, the, lease them, so I think the first step would be, how much does it cost to lease one? Do you get a deal if you lease five? Who knows? I mean, we don't okay. know anything about it. And it's it. probably going to be something that's gonna involve a Warren article. Uh, if it's a big expense. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so these are the things that we need to do. We're going to have a meeting on the 22nd that will address that. So all of these things, let's next by next week, everyone bring it, your stuff that you want to get to Jamie, and we'll talk about it. Um, and again, we're going to be talking about the parking. It will include the parking on the side streets, and it will include the parking lot uptown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll have a thorough meeting about the parking lots on the 22nd. Because um, the default budget means we don't, that their whole parking enforcement is, it's, it's last just what year's it was budget. last year's. It's last year's budget. Yeah. 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 So we'll be going over that and see how it's all affected. Any other comments on that? We've, um, so that is the end of the um, things that were on the agenda. Um, uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about uh, as part of the protocol for the meetings and that. If people have complaints, um, and I know that we that all of us come here and say, well, I have a complaint about this or I have a complaint about that uh, from a, from a, um, a taxpayer. Uh, the fact, or a resident, um, if people have a complaint, they need to put it in writing and complain to Fred. Or they can depend, really they, the first place they should go to is the department head. If it has to do with DPW, they should deal with DPW, make the complaint and give them a chance, the people that we pay, to solve the problem. Okay. And then if that isn't solved by DP, the DPW, doesn't listen to the people that are complaining, then they need to call Fred. And, um, and then if Fred doesn't solve the problem, they need to come to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. That's how... So you have a chain. Yes, right. that's how the chain works. It's the same way the chain's always worked. But yep. it's not fair for people just to um, have complaints and not ever have complained to the people that are going to bring the complaints yeah. forward to the board, which is Fred. Yeah. And the real pl place where they're going to get action immediately is if they call the DPW or department. whoever yeah. else. Yeah. So we, we've <clears throat> got to have, if people have complaints, bring them to the department heads first, and then we're the, the uh, if uh, the department heads or Fred can't solve them, then we mm -hmm. can just solve them here at the board. And yeah. if you're going to send an email to a department head with a complaint, copy me, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can that's follow a good up point. to make sure it's good done. Good idea. Yeah. So you need to send one uh, to the uh, Fred and the department heads, and you could even send. We know for one thing, when you send a complaint to Fred or the department heads, it, it always is going to be forwarded to the board of select. Right. Yeah. right. So anyone out there that complains, we will always get a copy of it. Then the other final thing I wanted to mention is that when we have the meetings here, this one seems like it was a long one, um, <laughs> but it, we're not going to be have any meetings that go past 10 o'clock. And yeah. so if we can't solve all of what needs to be done for that point, after 10 o'clock, we'll uh, talk about me having a, a, an emergency meeting or whatever else, because 10 o'clock mm -hmm. is the end of the, Good. that should be our final time. Okay. So does anyone have any closing comments? Yes, I have a non, uh, request for non-public session as soon as we adjourn. And that will be before 10. Yeah. Well, and that's, we're, we are planning on having the uh, non-public. Non under, under what? Under For RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 2. And that's a personnel issue. Okay, but don't and we need to? Road call, ro roll call. You need to have a, uh, you need to have a motion, you need to have a second, you mm -hmm. need to have a roll call. You need to have a secretary to keep the minutes. 
Okay. Who's going to be the secretary to keep the minutes? I got a, uh, I got a thing from Christina here. Okay. okay. So did you want to make that motion, Mary Louise? I do, but we want, do we not need to adjourn <laughs> first from this session and then go into non-public? No, we need to go non-public. Okay. Non-public. Well, we, all right. So I will yeah, make that. I'll second first. the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank all you, right. Fred. Thank and, you. And now you we all. are adjourning Here, the public.